Right then, week five of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Uh, Envious just need a point to make it through to the semi-finals, and Excel definitely need all of these points to potentially get through to those semi-finals. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's not gonna happen. Okay, well that is strong just, words. Just, from just, just for that. Just gonna say that. Well, listen, I mean, when it comes down to the maps, I mean, they've just been chosen, so we'll get to see that in a second. Um, but what uh, would Excel be hoping for in this situation? More of the same as what we discussed in the, the first matchup as well. The looser maps would be great. The fact is they don't have their fifth here, Wendansky. It's very difficult just to, you might just think, oh, it's just one player, got to slot him in. It's actually really difficult to do on the CT side, especially where you know the UK teams are lacking right now. You want to be playing your caches, your infernos, maybe Mirage at a, at a reach. Um, I'm sure we'll see more of that. So, Cash XL actually taking that out. That's surprising for me. Maybe they're not confident in that generally, but that's the maps I'd be going to in this particular scenario. I'm obviously not familiar, but we'll see how this one develops. It's looking pretty standard so far. The Envious is, is not really like, aware of them. The, what we've seen from Envious so far, they've been so dominant and they've been so good the week I saw them play that I don't think the maps almost even matter for them because exactly. like with this many vetoes, you're going to get to something that you're practicing. They are a proper team who are practicing with a real routine, you know? So they're going to be confident in any of the maps they play here. We saw them play on Inferno before they looked good. The fact that they're picking train here if you if XL aren't going to be good on that map that is a nightmare map if you're not good on that's one where it's, it's really really tough you need a lot of routine in terms of how you play the CT side otherwise yep. you're going to get run over so I feel like it's got to be Inferno that's got to be the hope for XL that they can take a point at least that's yeah. that's why I say I think one point might be something that's obtainable for them but definitely not a 2-0 for them that's just not, they're not going to get the clean sweeper definitely not okay well obviously Envious won the coin toss today I've chosen uh, Train and XL have gone for Inferno um, mm. if we look at map one Train uh, what are you going to say for this one what, what can Excel do? And explain it because we haven't seen Train so it's, far today. What, what, what do you need to do with that map? The thing is, on the T side especially, it's one of the most tactical maps we have in the pool right now. It's so much you can do with it. It can be great for teams like this, especially because you can just do set pieces straight away. You can just go into a set strategy off the bat because there's no real CT presence at the very start. Because you're on the T side, T spawn, you can go for five wall of smokes at the very beginning of the round. But when you have a player that's not familiar with the team, that could be difficult to slot him into that. I think that's the mentality they'll be going with. I don't think the defaults will be working out for XL here. I think you just have to go for the, the, the strategies and the set pieces. Hopefully they've got that out of their back pocket. But the thing is, if I'm envious right now, that lack of respect gameplay is coming in. I'm pushing them everywhere. I'm denying them any smokes. I'm finding that first pick, shutting down any strategies I had in mind. And at that point, I feel like the round will be over. I don't see a world where XL can really make any serious dents on track. Yeah, the tough part on this map, I think, is you're going to have to have a good CT half, I think, if you're XL, to even have a chance. Because yeah. that's the half where, sure, you can play off each other, just use skill to get kills. But from what I've seen of the Envious guys, they were well drilled in terms of their T sides, in terms of how they played the map overall. So I feel like if you don't get a good CT hub, it's going to be game over already because it's very unlikely with it not being your map that you're going to have this superstar T side that you're going to be able to get 10 rounds. So you, it's got to start there. The XL's got to have a good CT half, then they can build from that hopefully because otherwise Envious have really run over a lot of the teams they've played so far. Mm, okay, so uh, your both predictions on that are pretty much leaning heavily towards Envious. You kind of have to, really. The, the, the thing is, without the five-man unit of XL being available here, Mole being brought in a day before the event, you know, it's, it's difficult to believe they can make any sort of serious damage towards Envious. But you never know. If they win a pistol here, they start damaging the money of Envious generally. Maybe they can get a decent amount of rounds of board, maybe double digits. I'm not believing that just now. The huddles are coming in. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a strong thing that so, Envious do. Uh, a yeah, couple of pictures nice. being taken of them. Maybe just thinking about how, how they're going to frag the other team as much as possible. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, it's ben, I bet you I get 20. Nah, I'm going to get 21st, mate. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get, get 20. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> it's the UK. Just think about the ADR. Um, listen, uh, so you've got your predictions there. Um, in the little commentating casting area, we have, oh, the putt. <laughs> The, Ooh, thank you very oh, much for the French team there. The punishing yeah, pink shirt is out for Jackie. Snod's looking absolutely epic as you always. Too, and can we see top? the socks? Can we see the socks, Jackie? I don't know, I don't know about that. How is that going to get? Wow. Oh, oh, socks on for as well. <laughs> Spice uh, German, up a bit. How are you feeling about this one? Good. Yeah, obviously, yeah. current form of Envious should be really a 2 zero, especially because you factor in the fact that obviously Wendansky is away. You bring in Mole. Silver lining potentially for Excel is the fact that Mole plays a similar role. Experienced, old CS source veteran, so he can play the slower clutch rounds and really bring the experience where it's needed. Okay. I think when you look at it right now, all the UK teams, they're so envious of our envy have been playing, right? They're ripping their way for everyone. They've got a clean streak. Is this going to be another 2-0 under the belt? Yikes. I think so. <laughs> all right, well, listen, gentlemen, enjoy the <laughs> match one <laughs> by envious <laughs> versus XL. Well, it it should be one. an absolute slobber knocker, Snod's well. Yes. In reality, it's probably going to be a, a swift Fairly one. Fairly one-sided affair, potentially. I mean, obviously, factoring the fact that uh, XL are bringing a sub-talk this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Mole. No strange to the UK scene, of course. Yeah. Long standard veteran. Subbing in for Wendanski, they play that similar old source veteran style role, more of the passive support player. So it should be able to fit in nicely. 
Only good thing as well where you have the extra little bit of, of a buffer that Mole can add to the lineup is the fact he also used to call quite a lot. We saw him as yep. one of those heavy in-game leader types, so he also gives Jacob another head to bounce ideas off of if they get stuck into a position late mid-round where they cannot think of a strategy. Obviously, Jacob, he's a lot of on-the-fly calling. There isn't too much pre-planning. Mole could possibly add to that, give him some more options. Yeah, and Mole is notoriously known for his slower, well, more looser style calling. Yep. It's not really like an Emmy where he makes things very tactical. It's more so about the looser. I don't want to say puggy is slightly disrespectful, but more of that looser, less disciplined style of play. Have your star players work entries and openings around the map and you play off of that. Yeah, it's very true. The only problem is, obviously, with Mole is that because he's sort of departed away, he isn't playing as actively as he was before. Yep. Is that fatigue going to be there? Is he not going to be, you know, a staple as we used to see him? I mean, he used to be a very heavy impact fragger as well. Played on the old Easy Skins yeah. lineup as well. Can't forget that. But That's yeah. the thing. Obviously, that Easy Skins lineup, he tore his way through in terms of frag power. I believe he said that he had two hours in the past two weeks. Obviously, very committed with IRL in real life situations. That's why he's not actually playing the Elite Series. I know he's had offers. So, started to focus more on real life, of course. You've got to respect that. And that does mean it hinders how much he can actually play, practice, and be ready for a weekend or something like this. Yeah, it's true. Not the worst role to be dropped into, obviously, as well. The only issue is when Dansky actually had a fantastic game last week. Now, well, Inferno as well. Yeah. Yep, that's going to be the map pick coming out from Excel. So. Because Wendanski has been sort of more in that back seat recently. Since Ross was brought in as the addition of the coach, he retrained sort of how they played the game. Wendanski is no longer your aggressive fragger. He is just pure support. Yep. Obviously, Mole coming into that role, he doesn't have to try and drop an absolute abundance of kills into this game. That's where, obviously, you've got your boasters to do damage. Well, the players really you are looking for on this Excel lineup is your Luzzers and your Connor. Connor, especially on the T side, playing that mm. entry fragger role, trying to find openings and uh, probing information here, there, and everywhere towards the terrorist side. For Luzzer... He plays the more passive style up. He has a real impact in the afterplants, the clutches, the three versus threes, the four versus fours, once the rounds are underway. Thing is that worries me, though, obviously, as well, when you try and work your way through that. Luzza. Now, he is a very, very good player. Very talented. Yep, We've seen this in the past. We always touch on how impressed we were and how quickly he rise through the ranks of the UK scene. Obviously, after Immy sort of gave him a lot of courage, sort of brought him up, he then started to do work. But since he's found his home in this XL lineup, it seems like he's getting last alive all the time. He cannot find those opening frags. He seems a little bit scared. When we casted train last time, Jack, I believe it was four saves coming up from the CT side of XL. Let's see what they can do, though. Losing the knife round, they will start on the terrorist side. Let's see Jake him now buying the smoke and Molotov probably going to be going towards that B site. Smoke down lower and Molotov ricochet off of the Heaven Door towards default plant. Try and stop the Diffuse coming in. Talk about Diffuse as well with the Diffuse kit and smoke onto VKL. They might be aware of this though. Look at Lambert's position. He's pushed all the way out through Ivy. This is a ridiculous amount of information he's getting off this push. That's something we don't see from the UK teams on the CT side playing aggressive for information. The smoke could be used as well as a deterrent. Try and force the rotation back towards A. From number two, Petascale towards close connector. If he rotates back towards A, leaves it down to VKL, that could be the end. They're not going to fall for it, though. They hold their ground. They do get some early tags out as well. Jake and Feli low. He will now fall down as Jax finds a double kill. Petty scale as well will fall as he loses his head. Now then, Boaster going to go for the bomb plant. It's just Luzza trying to aid him. Attempting to go for that bodyguard roll. He's left all on his lonesome. and they did at least get the bomb plant, but they will fall down. So, bomb going down on the T side. Going to be forfeiting, potentially considering this one, ecoing into round number two. One of the issues with this is, yes, Bomb don't go down, you are going to have an AK buy into round number three, but you are going to lack utility and an AWP. We know how impactful Luzzer's AWP is, mm -hmm. and the, str the style of CS that Excel like to bring that tactical, execute heavy style. If they're going to fully kill this one, buy up into round number three, they are going to have smoke flashbang, or one smoke, or one flashbang. They're going to be lacking nades, and if one, well, once those executes come down, you're going to be lacking the Molotovs for the afterplant. That could be a very sticky scenario. Anyway, though, we are going to round number two. It's going to be the four SMG buy coming out from Envious Academy, along with the FAMAS onto Haji. And on to that T side Excel. No, it's a Kevlar or up just yet, just a decon to Luzza. He's going to try and go for that early peek out though. Nade tags him down so low. That splash damage coming through already on 44 HP. Doesn't get too much information either. Goal right now for MVS versus the unarmored pistols. Trying to four or five stay alive. Gotta be flank as much as possible. Get the kills onto those SMGs. You don't want Haji being the star of this round. You want the $600 kill bonus onto those UMPs. Yep, try and farm as much cash as physically possible. Right now, XL just playing it slow, though. Need to try and go for more of an aggressive style playing to this late round here. Burst out, overwhelm the opposition if they can. But Hadje could be the man to try and shut him down here. Gets into an elevated angle, just waiting for them to make the first mistake. Lowe should be onto two plays as well. Gets the first, nice headshot down to both. Trying to connect to second, though. 
Can he find it? Another nade will go out. This should actually take down two of the players. They're so low. Oh. Barely misses as the shrapnel will riddle its way through them. Incredibly low, though. They are going to push their way through. How do you get all of these information off the back of the audio queue? Just playing around Blue Train right now. We'll find the opening frag, but then gets dispatched by Luzzo. Mole as well. Let's actually find one frag. So they're creating a little bit of damage to the economy oh. of Envious. They start to find casualties, but Jax has had an absolute nerf. Mole now last alive with a UMP in hand. One kill. We'll grant him $600. $600 was what? Double flashbang. Smoke grenade. Molotov flashbang for the T side could be vital. The into the excuse. One more kill as well. It's money taken out of the CT side already. The super sub potentially here showing provenance. Yeah, doing a little bit of damage, starting to build up his own money pool here off the back of this UMP. They did look a little bit timid, yep. but Jax takes the fight and will take him down. Still though, three kills on the eco. Obviously not about a fail. Taking out roughly what? Ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars worth of investment onto the CT side economy. They're gonna have to buy up three more guns into this one. Rebuy armor and rebuy utility. And still the bar's gonna be looking like as well from Excel. Are we gonna be seeing strong utility coming up from them? And the answer to that is Jack is no. Jacob there, just a decoy to his name. The Igel and Captain, the play you want to have those smoke grenades. Mole obviously finding two kills. Not enough money for the full utility, but still, we're going to round number three, Jack. It's gonna be the all point to Lambert. Two UMPs and two M4s. Laza always on the early aggression here, trying to find that face out through mid main. Will peek out. Does actually get the opener. This is huge now for XL as well. They can try and slow it down a little bit. It is indeed. So, five versus four right now. Still, one minute 30 on the clock. The bomb towards Pop Dog. They're slowly going to be shifting out through that smoke. Maybe waiting for a flashbang from Team Main. Jacob there. Does he have a smoke? But he doesn't. So, Jacob can't smoke towards Green Train. They'll love a smoke or some aid there from above Pop Dog. Still, though, it's going to be three towards the A side and risking the one player towards B. Petterskill alone there with just a UMP. Has a Molotov smoke grenade, so can delay the T push if they want to, but here it comes. Oh, they push their way out, but Hadji gets the double kill as he finds a massive kill into the round. Boaster will fire back as he rips his head clean off. Mole had to come into effect. They wanted to go for the pincer play to try and take control of this bomb site, but it's not going in their favor. Lambert shuts him down, and they fall into a bit of a stalemate. Three versus two now. As the assault comes in towards the A site, Boaster trying to work magic towards Sandwich. Here's the steps towards Green Trade. Peaks out potentially towards site. Vehicle has shifted though and shifted his gaze back towards site. He knows their locations, but can he start to raise his boasties as the CTs are holding their angles? They find the opening kill. Boaster will strike back as he takes down Lambert. He's left in a one versus two. He's going to try and go for the clutch play here. VKL is incredibly low. Does he have to drop on them? Kits as well onto the CTs. Boaster, no utility to his name. Would have a flashbang. Use that to peek. But I believe the timing will get the better of him. Peter's going now coming from behind. No utility to aid him here as well. He's got to go for the dry face if he wants to run the risk. 20 seconds on the clock. It's going to need to be a snap decision very, very soon. VKL starts to back off, possibly contemplating that he has rotated off towards the B-bomb side, but it's Petty Scale that is going to be the nuisance into the late round here. If he finds this kill, there is potential. But they spot him out. They can tag his leg, and they deny the bomb plant as well. Unfortunate there for Boaster. Obviously, spotting the foot there. Bomb does not go down. Nevertheless, three kills found. CT economy is yet to build. So one round win potentially from the T side that could break the CT bank, force the Ecos, force the force buys, and that's where XL really get their rounds on the board. Instead though, XL are forced to go for the full Eco. No Kevlar bought up just yet for the T side. It's gonna be Deagle onto Connor this time. Obviously a star aimer, especially in this lineup as well. It is really down to Connor and Luzza. The one-two punch can it deliver. Yeah, they're your big dogs. They're the people you want to send in front line. They're gonna be blowing open shots into the site. And you will actually find the head of Lambert as well. And that could be a good start. You at least get something to work with. They don't have an effective arsenal, no utility, but if they keep finding these little frags and whittle their way through Envious, maybe there's a chance to the round. A few issues here though right now for Excel. No Kevlar onto any of these remaining two players. The gun as well. He got the frag towards back Ivy. He cannot retrieve that AK, drop it over to a player of Kevlar. Instead, V can with the op holding towards back alley. No way to try and blind him here as well. They just have to take the fight through. They're going to go for the jump face, bait out the shot, and then take the fight towards him. Flashbang goes over. VKL playing it smart, just back off, stay alive. They would have spotted the bomb as well. You can see the rotation coming in from Jax. He's left the B bomb site, coming back towards Connector. He's going to allow Hadji now to play towards stop sign, and that will aid the player towards Ali. Spots out, play towards Sandwich, tags up. Lesser. It's an effective setup in play here as it's so easy to just hold off the opposition. VKL will find that kill. Hadji comes in with a double as well, and this round is effectively over. Luzzo will fall, and Envious get four under their belt. Yep, good start there for Excel. Obviously, fun of the first kill, but you can't retrieve it. You can't drop that AK or M4 or AWP over to any armored player. You still have to be favoring the CT side. Even if it was a three versus five scenario, Jack has still been favoring the CTs there. Anyway, another buy round coming up as we go into round number five. Let's see where Excel are going to bring out. They will have the utility this time. Will they be going for an execute? We know that Lambert is open towards back alley. You can smoke off green train, go for an execute, do the wall of smokes outside. Try to get the bomb down, try to play after plant scenario. That could definitely pay dividends for them. Instead, though, they're going to be playing three players towards B. Actually, no, two players towards B. Oh, no, actually, no one's going towards either. It's going to be one towards team and a fast play towards B. Luz trying to get the entry. Luzzo will actually find it. 
as he pushes his way through. The Molotov goes down. They take a little bit of damage as they've now tried to claim control of this B bomb site. Luzzer, another frag comes through as well. Jax, he was coming in for the late round rotate, but Connor completely cuts it off. It's just on Hadjay and Lambert, and they're trying to backtrack out of there. They're backpedaling away, and Luzzer is hot on their heels. Money is lower on the XL side. Obviously, the risk versus reward here in this scenario could be questionable. Obviously, they found two kills, three kills, two kills onto that CT side, so envious. They know exactly that their money is low. They don't want to give away any of these kills. They have an AWP on M4 to save. The question is, can they save it? Because if they find this AWP as well, it's going to be a good addition to their arsenal. Oh, Hadje, fast reflexes, as he will be able to just tear straight through everyone that is on the hunt. XL at this point can't try and send out any more players as well. Need to hold back. They cannot afford to lose the rest of these rifles. So, round number five. Strong play there from XL. I can hear them cheering as well behind me. I initially thought they're going to go for the standard two towards Ali, two towards B, and one towards team main default that we see. You know, you go for the alley control, you have control of B upper, you have that playing teammate watching for a push, and then eventually you do pincer and squeeze in that A site from alley, pop dog, and teammate. One of the biggest things that used to be an issue with XL as well, more consistently when we see them play train, those standard executes towards the A bomb site, we see them very thick and far between. They never actually use them as actively. In terms of smoke takes on train, they're not as aggressive. They play a very slow split and pick style CS. They basically work around Luzzer getting the opening entry and then try and funnel in off that. So, talking about entries, Jax will find the first onto the aforementioned Luzza. It's going to be the 5 versus 4 in favor of Envious. And remember as well, Jack, this is the reset round for Excel. They had two players full in the last one. Envious could break the bank here onto the T side and force an eco, force a force by coming up from Excel. Break that bank, put it down to zero. And we could be seeing Envious flying forward with the lead. Yeah, not too stable right now in terms of uh, economy. So they are just having to reset mentally, try and see how they want to approach this round and spice it up a little bit here. Envious with a one-man advantage. One minute, ten on the clock still, though, Jack. Bomb towards outside team main, towards T-Spawn. We've got Petskill playing alone towards B once again. Interesting, actually. You've got the four versus five with the man advantage. Instead, you are playing a one-four split CT defense. And you can see how Petskill plays as well. It's actually very smart. He's playing passive. He's playing for the retake. He's just playing all the angles. The reason being is he's playing for the retake. In his idea, he spots other players. If he knows they're going B, he's going to Molotov behind sight, HE grenade it, counter flash it, bring time or allow time for his CT players, his CT teammates, sorry, to rotate in and go for the retake with the man advantage. That's how Envious play. When they have the advantage, they never let it slip. But anyway, here comes Spear Attack, and now the retake should come in. Better scale, trying to see what we can do. Trying to explode their way into the bomb site, but can they overpower that frontline infantry? Petty scale, the one that's trying to keep them at bay right now. Waits for his teammates to rotate in as well. Mole did what he had to do. He gets into the back line. He's going to try and cut off the rotate, but he gets spotted out. Five versus three now. CT kits. And actually, Connor does find a frag onto Lambert. It's going to be the four versus three. They're taking these fights and they are winning them. Every 1v1 is going in their favor right now. Envious not actually playing together as they start to push their way back through. They still have the Molotovs for the late round. So XL in an absolutely fabulous position, but Boaster will fall. And it just comes down to Jacob and Connor. The Molotovs will start to go out, but can they pick this one up? Connor for the aggressive play straight out, but Hanji overpowers him. Another Molotov flies through the air, lands on the bomb. Jacob, he's getting pushed from behind. He finds kill towards Jax. The Molotov will take him down. He's in a good position to pick this round up as he tries to retreat. Massive round there from XL. The double Molotov comes out, denies the defuse coming out from Envious. Obviously, they had a smoke grenade there, extinguished the flames. They had the two-man advantage. That should have been the CT's round. Such an expensive round, though, for them. Even though they picked that one up, that is a lot of damage to their uh, money. It is indeed. They get the bomb down, so we could be seeing potentially one or two UMPs. So, actually, no. The money's actually better than I thought. It's going to be the 5AK buy coming out from Excel as we go into round number seven. Envious, though, going to be eco in this one. They've got 2,000 across the board. They are going to get 1,900 into their bank accounts next round, so they can buy up into round number eight. This is the round where they're going to seed it. Don't buy up Kevlar. Play the pistols and allow Excel to get to three. The big issue here is you can't let Excel gain as much money as they possibly can here. Try and get some kills on that AK Kevlar save. Yeah, Envious as well. They've always been quite coherent in the way they play their eco rounds. Don't really play them out like gun rounds. A lot of the time you see that very shock and awe, more aggressive style they play. Stack, yeah. yeah, you see the stacks of that aggressive style play. Jax and Haji are the ones in the ecos that actually do a lot of the early hunt in. They're the one going for the information plays. What's interesting as well is the fact that VKL is playing so passive with that AK. Mm -hmm. Two reasons for that. One, obviously he's anticipating the play towards the B bomb site. Or two, he's actually wanting to save this AK. He doesn't really see a chance of them winning the round. Going into round number some, well, round number eight, how much money actually do the CTs have? Can you show us? So VKL is 2,000. He's going to get 1.9k. Uh, he can't afford an AWP. He can't drop over another M4 to play that can't afford it. So the idea here, maybe VKL is playing so passive because he wants to save the AK, drop that over and still be able to buy an M4, have an extra buy into the gun round. Anyway, those smokes ran in towards the B-bomb site. It's going to be just better to go alone. 
to save it. As a backup of his teammates, though, they're in some good positions, but can he aid him from afar? The Overwatch with VKL without AK-47. Pexcale getting all of this information right now, and they seem unaware of his location. He does peek out, but he pre-fires a little bit too early. They do spot him out, and they remove him from the situation. VKL starts to rain down a little bit of Hellfire, spamming away with that AK-47, but can't connect towards anyone right now. They are left in a four versus four as the CT starts to come in from the rear, but Mole finds a headshot back on towards Jax Lambert now. With the AK, he's up high, and he's doing work as well. Mole gets shut down. Jacob responds. VKL finally comes into effect. With this AK-47 pushing up close, they need to start to react soon. They have no kits to work with, and it's just left on Boaster. It's not about the round, Jack. It's about the money. Damage has been done in terms of the economy. Boaster now last alive. Doesn't anticipate Hedgy to be saving. Obviously, there's an AK close. Potentially, they could save once the bomb does explode. The question is now, as you know, what starts the bomb instead. Doesn't actually manage to save anything in two round of array. But damage has been dealt, Jack. So much money taken out of the T-hands, they're playing for the exit frags. And now as we go into this next round, round number eight, this could be Tio or Dire for Excel's bank account. Envious, if they break that, force Excel to use everything they have into a force buy, win that, force the Eco to come up for them on their T-side, that can be their gateway to victory. Look at that, 200, 300, 100 dollars into three players. So if they lose this one, 1.4k into the bank, they're not gonna be able to afford a strong buy. Anyway, they're talking about buys, it's gonna be a solid buy on both halves. We have the aggression as well, as, as always leading the charge, he storms out to the middle of the battlefield, will get the opening frag, doubles it up as well as he's hungry for these kills. Can he get the triple kill? They're locked into position, he finds it quite swiftly. Connor will go down, but there's Luzza roaming his way for the quad kill comes out. He is the aggressive man, he's the explosive fragger that we need to see. Previous weeks, it looked like he'd started to come down, he'd sort of lost that hype behind him, but Luzza looking like he's back on form. It's interesting how players change their playstyle when they're on the AWP or when they're on the AK. Yeah. Laza is usually the primary opera for the XL side, but it seems like he's unleashed once you put him on the AK. Suddenly, maybe doesn't feel the pressure, he finds himself with more freedom. So we're going to stalemate. Four to four in terms of the scoreline, round number nine. Gonna be another eco coming up from Team Envious, another round now where XL can build up the bank even further going into the latter portions of this first half. This could be nice as well because we've seen Lambert go for this consistent info play early on straight through Ivy. Luzza this time around is defending it. He has the AWP. If Lambert tries to get overconfident and peeks out, should shut him down. Yep. Obviously, Lambert is your primary AWP for the Envious side as well. And the IGL too. Having the AWP into his hands would be stellar. But I don't think Luzza is going to take the bait there. Yep. Everyone just hunker down right now, holding their crossfires. Play it smart. Don't give Envious an inch. They will take a mile with it. We've seen that in the past. Right now, just hunker down and wait for the push to come to you. Allow them to make the first mistake. Yeah, there's two ways you can play your anti-ecos. There's one, you play very fast and you play the group style. Or there's two, you play very slow and you wait for the CTs or well, whatever the opposition is really doing to push in, play aggressive with the pistols. It's looking like Excel, only the first option there. Play very slow and then group up towards the side. They want to see if the CTs will get aggressive and throw away the advantage. So Pedesco once again alone towards the B-bombs. Has the back of a VK of the Deagle. What can he really do with that gun? Bit of a failed Molotov there, and it seems like it is just being quite a bit of a ruse. They're going to try and go for the pop dog play down towards the A-bomb site. Connor makes the first contact here as he peeks out, shuts down Jax. But are they aware of the location of Haji? Haji will overpower him as well. Petiscale is starting to come over through the rear. Things could get serious here. Mole now finds the frag onto Petiscale. AK is retrieved as well. Haji has the Kevlar. So four versus three. They could be saving this one as well into round number 10, but it's looking like they're still going for it. I do though. Does begin to back off a bit. The Molotov going down is going to burn out a lot of time. They're still trying to test the water slightly. Hadji just going to go for the save, it seems, off the back of this. Luzza will take down Lambert. VKL does strike. They weren't aware of his location. If VKL can somehow retrieve the AWP, that would be fairly effective for Envious off the back of this round. He still needs to find one more kill though towards stop sign. And Heaven as well. Does get it onto Jacob. Has the AWP in hand. The question is, can he actually exit with it? No, both still will find that kill. So, Hadji right now has the AK. Actually, might find a kill as well onto Molly if he does decide to go up through Pop Dog. Bomb does expire. Hadji survives, and Mole is going to be staying put towards Pop Dog. We go into another round here, Jack. So far, so good from Excel. They lose the pistol round and already have five rounds on the board. So, very strong play for them as they have found five gun rounds into this first half. It's going to be the buy coming out from Team MVS. It's going to be the AWP back onto Lambert's hands. What else have. And just got in the inventory. It's going to be the three rifle setup. Actually, the double up. So VK opening probably towards B. Lambert opening towards A. They know their Excel are playing the pick style. So you bring out the ops to counter that. They're not being executed upon. So you have the ops. They find the kills as the T's walk into their crosshairs.
Yeah, and this is where they're going to be very effective as well. They've always been predominant on the orbs in good setups as well. On the CT half, it could be good. They push their way down towards Happy Bombsite, though. They actually do double team Petty Scale here. They're able to get the angle towards him and dispatch him. Excel running with the momentum they have. They go for the fast B play, catches Petty Scale off guard. And it's going to grant them the B-bomb site. They have control of connector as well, Jack. It's so hard to rotate in through CT if you have control of connector. Got themselves into good afterplants as well, trying to set themselves up for their power play into the late round here as the retake will start to come out. A little bit of ut uh, utility actually spread across the few CT players still alive. Connor's doing damage, but not actually finding the frags. He's getting as many tags as possible, though. And it seems like they've decided to back off from this. They don't want to run the risk and lose the weapons. And this now throwing in the towel. Is he going to be saving these guns in the next round, round number 11? I believe they can drop. How many rounds have they lost in a row, please, Observer? Can you build the scoreboard, please? There we go. So they've actually lost five in a row, so we'll have the $3,400 loss bonus. They can drop over a gun to Pediscal. No problem at all. Oh, wow. Both Both there, just it. screaming down the microphone there. You can see the passion. And the thing with the Excel, right? You have players like Boaster, mm -hmm. Windanski, of course, very emotional players, and players that run with it. We saw the call there from Jaken to rush B. Caught Pediscal off guard. One of the nice things I saw as well, when you're on your T side, on terrain, and you go towards the B-bomb site, it's so important, it makes such a big difference to have control of connector to cut off the rotations to not allow the retake to come in from the CT side. Anyways, give me another buy, double upside once again, VKL getting aggressive, trying to find the first frag towards b Wolves. Trying to push their way through, VKL. Switching it up like this with a style of play could be a nice bit of a, a difference in pace. It's not just pace as well, it's information. You can see the rotation now, Petersko has left that B-bomb site, VKL the op can see the whole of B. He has all the information they need. He's going to get early information as well. So once a player does peek him, he's going to know exactly what's going on. Jack's now taking control of A main. So, fairly, fairly uh, standard round coming up from Excel. The slow default got one player towards Ali, two players outside team in, holding for the push, and then the two players towards B horse and close Pop Dog. Usually you would see one more player towards Pop Dog, but obviously you can't nitpick everything. Lars with the op peeking towards Ali, hoping and praying that someone's going to peek into him, but you can see how the CT side have actually given up that side of the map. VKL, you will find the opening contact frag. This gives them all that information she was talking about earlier. He also falls back. They can just hold back on those close angles now. Just play crossfires and wait for the push to come towards yep. them. Such early information as well. So you can actually have a rotation back in through connector towards B if, of course, he gave the call that it was the rush. Nice Bonatov there actually goes down. Hadji gets burnt up quite a bit left on 31 HP. If he did have the HE here, he could try and blast them out. Drops down the ladder, tries to go for the frag, but Jax will take him down. Four versus four, now Boaster comes out through Alley. Lazar will shut down Jax, but still a four versus two. Number one on top goes in as well. Hadjay is trapped at this point. He really can't move. It all falls back and towards Lazar. He has the orphan in his hands. Normally, such a prolific fragger with the weapon, but what can he do now? He's back on home turf. Once again, we see it so often. Lazar last alive with the AWP in hand. Will eventually go down to the M4 Petiscal through the smoke, and they will grant round number five there for Envious as we go into round number 12. So, Excel, they went for the very, very slow play. They had the default where you have one towards Ali, two towards Team Main, two towards Pop Dog, but you can see how useless that was because, one, you have no control of the map. You're leaving the Orper alone towards Ali just to hold the angle towards um, Green Train, backlines, and whatnot, but they're not taking control of it. Luzza, all he had to do was smoke off backlines, Molotov towards Green Train, and suddenly you have control of the map. You force a rotation maybe from the B bomb site. That could be the player they need to do to change things up. Obviously, Envious Academy may be reading too much into Excel's t sides. Once again, a very slow default. No one towards Ali this time here. Lambert, though, orping and holding that angle. So, going to be seeing the 3-2 setup on the CT side. VKL with the AWP and Pedisco with the M4 towards the B bomb site. And the remainder of Envious Academy towards A. Bomb, slowly but surely shifting through Whitehalls. He could go down Pop Dog if they want to, or eventually execute towards that B bomb site. They have had success towards B mostly. Get that first kill onto Petterskill and smoking off, mulling off connector and having control and blocking off, cutting off all rotations. Yeah. It's actually a fairly good showing so far from XL as well. I mean, if we look at it right now, statistically, Envious, they've been losing at most, I believe, sort of six rounds overall against most teams. Obviously, Method were able to get the most rounds off them last yeah, week 13, when they, when they got 13. Yeah. yeah, that was the, the most we've ever seen. Before that, we were looking at sort of six rounds at a half maximum. So XL definitely starting to push them to the limit right now, making them look human. Exactly that. You've got to be thinking as well for Envious, when are they eventually going to lose, con not confidence, sorry, but when are they going to lose concentration? Mm. You're guaranteed playoffs, you're on 12 points, you've won five in a row, you haven't dropped a map yet. At one point, you just, oh, it's just Excel, we can take this one easy. The upset starts to happen, and Excel have too, too many rounds of a buffer to cause for the uh, Envious to come back into it. Anyway, that's going to be the execute towards our side. Let's see what Hedachi can do 
hold off the assault. Playing up close and personal here as he wants to try and shut them down immediately. Will peek out, finds the first dragon towards Laza. Tries to get another shot off. Will take the fight back towards Mole. He's so confident right now. His teammates are dropping around him. He gets left in a free versus free here. But the T's need to get that bomb down fast. They take control of bomb train. Connor fires back as he rips his way through. Hadji gets torn to shreds. It's on Lambert here to try and be that first point of contact now. The AWP is in play over by bomb train. He's spamming away in towards the smokes. But Connor, he's got the high ground. He was in a better angle and it was so easy for him to pick him off. It's all on Petty Scale. He is struggling to try and find an angle that compliments him here as he sprints around like a headless chicken. Tries to get a couple of shots off. Removes Jacob, but Boaster will always set that frag. Seven to five, now the reset comes in for Envious. They win one round and they lose him. The execution towards outside. Hadji couldn't do enough there towards Sandwich to halt the attack coming in towards A. Question is, how good is the buy going to be from Envious? Are we going to be seeing another eco for the next buy? I know they're going to be forcing into this one. It's going to be a 3 AK, 3 M4 by, sorry. UMP onto Pentascale towards that B bomb site, and then Lambert with the AWP. On the flip side, Excel bringing out 4 AKs, and once again, the AWP onto Laza. Are we going to see something more aggressive? Well, talk about aggression, Jack. It's looking like the fast rush B, and only Pentascale has the UMP to hold this one off. First, their way through, and Nate does go in early. That transfers actually quite a bit of damage on towards everyone. The UMP as well, as he starts to hammer down, will eliminate both. That could come back to bite them in the late round. VKL will arrive on the scene as he starts to ring up his boys as well. Everyone will sprint over to try and aid him. Four versus four now, but Excel have very weak after plant positions here, Jack. They're going to be tunneled in and eventually pushed upon. Four versus four. Kits on the CT side and Molotovs. Envious working as a unit as well here as they storm the site together. Timing is going to be crucial into this round, but Mole peeks as well. Luzza finds a kill back on towards Jax. There's only two CTs left, but they start to close the gap. Luzza peeks once more. The confidence is on display finally as he pulls the head straight back off of Aji. And Lambert is forced to get out of there. Very well played there from Excel. They have no control of the real estate, no control of the map towards the B-bomb site. They allow the CTs to rotate in towards back lines, but good time flashes. Peaks from Lazar as well, making it the man advantage and the second man advantage as well from poster towards default. So, Excel now, eight to five, they win the half. And very, I don't want to say standard, but, yeah. well, basically, vintage call in there from Jacob. You know they're playing two towards B, three towards A. You do the execution towards A where there's three people on the CT side. That means, Going into the next round, you expect them to go 4-1 to bring VKL back towards the A site because Envious Academy are worried that the A site's weak. Of course, you expect one player towards B. You're right. You go towards B. You find that kill, and suddenly the B bomb site is yours. So, vintage, classic calling coming out from Jacob, but it's very, very effective. Give me the eco coming out from Envious. Obviously, Lambert saved the up in the previous round. This could be nine to five here, Jack. They go for the fast play as well towards the A bomb site, but the welcome mats down. They've got filthy shoes. They're rubbing it all over the place as they take control. Connor as well adds insult to injury as he eliminates Jax in a matter of second. Lambert does arrive on the scene, wants to cause a stir as he finds the flick over on towards Mole. But what more can they do? Four versus four now. Obviously, no careful apart from Lambert with the AWP in hand. If they can retrieve an AK, there's a chance here, but still, no kit as well. The bomb is planted. Unlikely scenario here for Envious. This is a good showing from Connor so far as well. He's always the man that we hype up in. If he shows up, he is going to be a showstopper. Just constant damage. Always was known as this big impact fragger online, and he's converting that to land now as well. Took him a while, but obviously, eventually, get the experience. The land just go away. And with time, you do get more comfortable on the stage. How'd you hear with the Zeus? What is that, $300 worth of investment to try to take out 4,000 in one shot? I think so, mate. Fairly, uh, fairly comical. Obviously, he has no kids who so can't go for the ninja. Just want to see if he can get an exit kill. As the AK hand, but eventually will go down. So, five to nine. Excel. Nine gun rounds, one for them. They lose the pistol. And they still have the four round advantage in the first half. Unlikely scenario. We're not really used to seeing that when casting and watching Envious Academy. No. Here's the thing as well, right? The complete difference that we're seeing from every other team that's played against Envious. They've always given them a lot of respect. They've played a slow game. They always used heavy reliant on tactics. Whereas XL, they're just going for these aggressive burst style strategies. Shock and awe, charge in, fresh spatter into the works consistently time and time again. Envious seems scared about the fact that someone's just challenging them in raw firepower one-on-one -on -one aim battles. They're not used to that. They're used to it just being a lot slower, playing against strategy. And the thing is, the more rounds that XL are picking up, the hype that uh, Boaster's getting behind him, that's going to yep. pump everyone up. They're a very emotional team. They've always been like that. If Boaster's on form, they're going to love it. We saw it you know, a couple of weeks back. Boaster, a couple of rounds into the game, just went, I'm, I'm not feeling it today. And you know, he wasn't able to get out of that rut. Boaster today, loving it once again. He's got the hype behind him. Everyone's feeding off that. They're going for the aggressive plays. Luzza looks like he's got confidence again. This is good. One of the issues is, well, one of the reasons veterans will say stay as composed as possible is because when you play the very emotional style CS, you have very high highs, but very low lows. Mm -hmm. One of the issues is what if Envious Academy suddenly came back into this one? They won that second half pistol. They made it 9-9. Nine nine. They suddenly won that first gun round. 
as soon as Bose is quiet, the comms are quiet, yeah. people aren't so excited and motivated, and the momentum is on their side, that's where things really can fall flat, especially on this CT side jack, where we've seen how poor it can be. Mirage, right? They've had 90 rounds before, but over three games on Mirage, CT side in the Elite Series, they got nine rounds in three games. Simply put, they cannot have a repeat of that CT defense coming into tonight. They have the foreign advantage as a bare minimum. If they make it 10-5, lose that pistol, they can't let it slip. No, definitely not. XL need to break the curse today, show up on CT half, and try and close this one out. It would be a massive shake-up if they could do so. The early play comes back through Lambert consistently. He's going for this play, and Mole just peeks into it, gives him the opening he needs. Envious off the back of the pistol. I've only found two rounds in terms of gun rounds. Let's see if they can make it three. It's going to be the five versus three. Two-man advantage as Lads of Morfo. Dropping themselves down at Lemons right now, and they're just meat to the grinder. They get teared up straight away. Both of their heads getting claimed by Jax. Jacob now in the one versus five. Can't really play for exit kills. Try to dent the economy. Obviously, this is the final round going into the second half. If you're Jacob right now, you're probably saying, you know what, lads? Nine to six. It's a very good half, especially after losing pistol as well. Could be calling cool the CT pistol in this scenario right now, but anyway, eventually he will go down. Lambert will find the kill onto Jacob. Nine to six score line. Yeah, I think this is the most round we have seen by far in one half. I think it was well. eight. I think the most we saw before this was eight seven on cobblestone between method. Yeah. And yeah, nine to six definitely the most we've seen so far. A team that has actually managed to get off of Envious Academy. Yeah. So not too bad for obviously for XL here. This is a good showing for them. They've got the pump. Everyone just needs to continue out now. As you touched on though, CT half has always been their major issue. Mirage is the most predominant for yeah, it. I it's mean, awful CT side. They physically cannot win anywhere from sort of four to five rounds. They just can't do it. They just even if they have a flawless T half, they cannot get the buffer going to close it out on CT. You have to maybe factor in as well the fact they are playing with a sub. When you play with a sub, it's like, okay, pressure's off. Yep, we're playing versus the best team in the Elite Series. We're not playing with a full lineup. Just play loose, enjoy yourself. We saw how aggressive Luz was playing, pushing through team main, getting double entry frags with the AWP and the AK. Usually he's so passive and potentially scared as well to make the play. Seems like the pressure's off his shoulders and he's delivering. I mean, actually as well, when you look at Moe as an individual player on a map like Mirage, yeah, maps like Mirage and Dust2, he would always absolutely kick up a fuss, tear his way for everyone. He's a very good, talented individual player. It just depends if, because he's not got the hours there, he's not got the groundwork done, if he's going to be able to do as much damage. So obviously that'll be coming up later, but back into train for now. Look at that as well. The two leading frags, or players with the most kills on the CT side excel, is Connor and Lars. The players you need to be fragging and have a momentum in their side. Anyway though, Jack, we're going to the second pistol. Excel lost the first one and still finished the first half on nine rounds. Tank nine, armor onto Lambert. It's gonna be the utility buy onto Petiscale. Three to Kevin on that T side. What are they gonna to opt to do? The fake towards Ali, potentially bring the bomb towards B. They've also got the bomb towards, can go down Pop Dog and still split the A site. Lambert makes a lot of noise with that Tech 9. Coming back towards Pop Dog, it's going to be the A split, Jack. Yeah, you can hear Lambert making noise on the stage right now as he goes for that call early. They wanted to go for the aggressive style of play. Boast the bounce through the smoke, but unfortunately, he will be short-lived, gets taken down. Jack's a double kill comes out. This is when, is he, when he is at his best. He needs to be the heavy impact fragger, go in early and create those openers for your team. Five versus three now. Get onto the CT side, though. Jacob makes it five versus four, but low HP onto Mole. Thankfully, though, Jacob has this kit and the smoke diffuser. It's still going to be hard to wing them out, though. They're in good after plants, power positions that they can just wait it out and come into effect when they need to. No real reason to peek right now. They have crossfire setups, and they've got a ridiculous amount of information. Hajay as well. If they don't sniff him out soon, he could be such a nuisance. He's in the elevated angle, just raining down bullets from above. Even if he doesn't find the second kill right now, Connor surely cannot pick this one up. Will fall, and Hajay will be the one to claim it. Envious now winning both pistols on this first map of this best of two. Seven to nine with the scoreline now. Excel. How many players are going to go for the force plan into this one? We see sometimes Excel go for the double eco. They want to have more utility, potentially bring out the double orbs, have molotovs and whatnot, kits as well into the first buy round. So the question is, who's going to buy Kevlar and how much investment are we going to see? It's going to be the Deagle, armor onto Connor, CZ pistol and armor as well onto Bolt and Boaster. So Jacob and Luzza both can go for the orb and a strong buy in terms of utility into the first gun round. It's going to be three SMGs as well onto the Envious Academy T side and the double AK onto Jackson VKL. Yeah, playing it smart though. Play your split and pick, just hold back, play positions, hold crossfires, try and farm the cash with those SMGs if the CTs are gonna allow you to do that. Jacob will actually offer himself up a sacrifice as well, as Hajay will take him down. So, already the one man advantage as well for the T side. Playing versus the quasi bike coming up from the CT side, so you can't really read too much into it. You want the kills though onto the SMGs. Obviously, Jack's one of the kills with the AK, not really an ideal scenario, but then again, you have four or five stay alive, you're gonna build up your bank regardless. Yep, fairly good round so far, obviously just farming that cash. It is only the one kill to the rifle. Laza, last alive. Hunker down, in a bit of an awkward position. Can try and do some damage towards Envious. You've got two low players in Haji and Jax. But obviously with just a PT-50 in his back pocket, it's going to be a struggle.
Yep, struggle indeed. Only real goal here as well as try and find some exit kills, dent the T-economy as much as possible. Obviously, if you find two, three kills here on the Ecos and the Force Buys, you're going to force out a UMP, a Tech-9 into the first buy round and weaken the firepower of the T-side. That's the real ideal scenario, but... Obviously, Excel finds zero kills. Five players staying alive right now for Envious on the T-side. You can see as well, 3,000 across the board in terms of their banks. They're going to be building up money. So, going to keep the three SMGs. Another question to mention is, going to the first buy round, Jack, are they going to bring forward the MP7 and the MAC-10 and the UMP as well? If they bring forward the SMGs and they win that round, the money is going to be in such a good scenario. You've got kills and SMGs as well. It's going to build up your bank even further. We could be seeing a very one-sided affair on this T-side, Jack. It's true. If they do go for that scout round, it's going to be so easy to just farm the cash at that point. Excel as well. Once again, just a light investment. Jake, I'm just going to go for the PT-50. Everyone else is going to be skimping, saving that cash up for the following round. Heavy stack towards the B-bomb site. Envious actually do pace it back a little bit, though. Going to dial it back, not go for the aggressive burst towards a bomb site. Just scope it out and see how it goes. Yep. Envious on the T side, so far in the Elite Series, they play so slow, so passive. They wait for the UK teams to push, get aggressive, and make mistakes. They take advantage and capitalize off of them. And that's why they're currently 5 to 0, 10 to 0 in terms of maps. Excel, though, currently trying to go for the upset. That's that difference in game style as well of Envious. They are very team heavy. You see them not missing a trick at all. They'll clear every angle on an entry towards very slow and steady, yep. Yeah, flash each other in. There's no running risks with them. Everything has to be done by the book, essentially every time. So it's going to be the good play towards the A site. Five players still alive right now for the T and CT side. The question is though, will Excel give away the kills onto those SMGs and give away potentially two thousand, three thousand dollars worth of money in it to that T bank? Trying to play off angles right now, hold these crossfires, hunker down, stick yourself into an awkward position, and hope you don't get pushed and overrun. If they try and starve that CT economy in this round, don't allow the SMGs to get kills, it's only going to be beneficial yeah. for them. I mean, sometimes on T sides, we'll see five players running to a Molotov or dying to the $300 loss bonus. Just to minimize as much money as you can, possibly farm up with those SMGs. Ooh, a little bit awkward. Petty Skull will come in from the rear, and he will find an easy kill. So, first bar now, the second half. This is a massive round for Excel to win. You can see, once they bought up here, Jack, they're gonna have no money in their bank account. And at that point, they're really gonna be stuck in a rot. Envious can make it 10 to nine. They can win versus the Force Buys, win versus the Ecos, and really do damage to that CT economy and the scoreline as well. It's gonna be the double outside of runner coming up from Excel. Up onto Jacob and Luzza. Let's see what they're gonna bring out. It's gonna be the three SMGs brought over into round number 19. Are they gonna play hard and fast? with those submachine guns. Yeah, they can run the risk into this one. It doesn't need to be as standardized as the previous rounds, because if they lose it, they can instantly get that rebuy out. And Hadje, of course, he's always up to his old tricks. Pushing through the smoke right now, gonna try and play around it, then go for the burst. If he gets the opening kill on towards Laza, it could be such a big catalyst into the late round. But let's see as they start to flood their way through. They've opened up the floodgates. Oh KL gets the opening kill as he dispatches Connor. Hadje as well will take down Luzza. Boaster does a little bit of work, but it's short-lived as he set up for the burn to a by Lambert. Jacob will also fall. It's all on Mole. This round has happened so swiftly as Envious just take it by storm. Excel CT sides come crumbling down. A fast player there from Envious towards outside. They catch Luz up. And I believe it was Connor of guard towards the outside side. They find the, the two initial entries, and from there, it all falls apart. It's scary as well, because obviously, Jacob on that second drill, he plays more of a heavy passive. He's, yeah, your, he's, he's a support, support style. Or, yeah. yeah. And we didn't see anything. Kill from anything. Them. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Double up set up into that. Luzza, we're usually used to see that looser style of play, go for a bit of aggressive pick. There's no early information plays, no idea what's going on. Nembius, the star of that as well. Group up, two flashes over, smokes in, instant sight take. Precisely. It's going to be cause for concern now for Excel on their CT side, notoriously very weak on their defense. Strong on the T side, you've got strong aimbers onto Connor. Luzza, good calling as well from Jacob, especially now they have more to give up some uh, suggestions. Of course, here's a. Primarily a call-up, but he's subbing in for this week. So, it's going to be the Eco coming out from Excel. They're going to be conceding this, conceding this one, allowing Envious to get to 11-9. And again, Haji bringing forward the MAC-10. His money's going to be in such a stellar position. They're pushing in as well. And this is a crossfire, so even if he does fall, Jax gets the trade straight away. Boaster struggling. Couldn't quite control his CZ there, but Connor from absolutely miles away will find a juicy little headshot on towards Jax. So... It's a four versus four, but obviously no Kevlar. Just pistols right now onto the CT side. As better scale finds one, and this gets taken down there onto one HP. Just three CTs left at this point. Jacob essentially almost dead as he limps away from Pop Dog. Just going to try and huddle up, 
hope to do something together. If they find some exits, best case scenario, but they're starting to lose the buffer they had. Envious going to have 11 rounds off the board off the back of this one. At least Hadjay's finally forced off the Mac 10 and back to using a rifle. Remember as well, this was a 9-5 to five scoreline. And it's going to be 9-11. to 11. As Envious Academy win six on the trot. VKL still just waiting for the push to come towards him. XL, they don't want to run the risk at this point. They're going to peek out, trying to connect the shots with those pistols. Connor does have the deagle. He can be incredibly crisp with it as well. But you can see he just doesn't want to take these peaks. Yep, obviously for Connor right now, trying to get a headshot, take out $4,000, $5,000 worth of investment from the T side. But then again, right, we're into the latter portions of this first map. It's not about money here. It's about the rounds. Envious, as the bomb does explode eventually, we'll get to 11. It's going to be 11 to 9 now. Two round advantage from Envious after being in a four round deficit. So, buy is going to be coming in eventually. Connor on your screens right now. The entry and Starfragger. As I say, Starfragger had you there on your left. Starfragger from the envious side. So, round number 21, it's going to be the double-up setup once again onto the XL side. Three M4s will fill out the rest of the buy. Envious is going to be bringing out the single-up setup onto Lambert and then the four AK. So, where does Jake and Willis go? Where do they split their AWP defense? Already fast flashes and smokes going towards our side. Lambert might be dueling towards his AWPs. Once again, going to go for that fast play. This could actually bypass the AWPs entirely if they're able to push their weight way too deep and take the aggression up close personal. Well, Mole, look at it, he goes for the information play early, finds the opening frag, he's still alive at this point. They bypass him, they don't know he's there. Mole finds a double kill as he rips the head clean off of Jax. This is pretty good, the first start into the round that actually looks effective for the CT defense. VKL as low as PHP as well. Lambert will find the frag though, turn into a three versus three. Bomb is going to be retrieved. VKL eventually goes down to the H shield. Jake Kim Hadji, if you can find an entry towards that side, find the kill towards Ali, open up the A site for Lambert. This could be another round here for Envious. This could be so awkward timing. though. If he finds the kill, goes for the knife as well, butchers him as he takes down Luzza. They're just left with Jacob with the AWP Connor alive as well. This is going to be a hard retake. Goodness, Connor's gone all the way around. Yeah. He was towards Ali, towards Green Train. He could have peeked out, stopped the bomb plan, got the trade frag as well onto Luzza. Instead, he goes the long way around through Ali, back around towards Team Main. But Jake and this could be karma for what happened earlier. Will he get the timing drop onto Lambert? Lambert has the angle covered though. He's facing towards DP2. Jacob has to push towards him. He doesn't know he's there. It's an easy frag. It's just left on Connor. He can be an absolute clutch master into these rounds. So smart. But will it come out today? Finds one. Takes down Lambert. Quickly taps the bomb to try and force the face from Hadji. Spots him out. Finds the kill. Connor is going to pick up the round. Clutch play. It's as good as it gets. Makes up for the mistake he made earlier. Goes for the long rotation. Eventually will clutch it out on the one versus two. Big round there for Excel to win. But remember, one player staying alive. He does retrieve the op though, but the money is still going to be low on to the CT economy. You're going to be seeing maybe an SMG, potentially a 5.7, and a lack of utility as well onto that CT side. And CT side train, you need your grenades. First Molotov towards Team and a counter flash as well. You need smokes towards Ali, smokes towards Pop Doggers to counter off executes and pushes from the T side. And yeah, there it is. UMP to Jacob. Still though, good utility onto the CT side. Orp once again onto Luzza. So no double up setup right now for Excel. How will that change things? True. A restriction they have there, obviously for Jake as well. We didn't see too much from the orb. He hasn't found a frag with it yet because he's been playing so passive. Just getting overwhelmed, forced in positions where the angle he's left in when they're that close, he can't actually use the weapon efficiently. So it wasn't the biggest benefit to their CT defense, but into this round, just having the one with Luzza, how is he going to play it? I want to see if he's going to go a little bit more aggressive, if he's going to be quite lenient. Obviously, we're used to him being the one going for the information plays. Right now, just playing that anchor role towards B, being the support. Yep. I like this default coming up from Envious as well. Two players towards Ali, two towards B and one towards Team Main. They're going for the split style of CS. They take control of all these portions of the map I mentioned earlier. Why wasn't Lazar throwing the Molotov and smoke towards Ali? Look at the map control they have. Now they can split and pin to this A site. Connor, he's going to have some hype behind him, but will he be able to find these kills as they peek together? They're going to go for the little information boost. That's quite nice, as they do peek through. Hadjay as well. He's an absolute one-man army as he just takes his head instantly. So, more now alone towards that deep bomb site. The smoke. Going down towards ramp. Question is though, what is the CT rotation going to be? It's going to be Lazaro rotated back towards B. Boaster finds a frag. Turns into four versus four now. As Boaster equalizes the numbers, but here comes the push towards B. It's all down to Lazar and Mole to hold off the assault towards the B bomb side. Lazar has the AWP. He has a lot of utility as well. Mole, he's going to get all this information once they try and go for the play. He peeks out, but he can't find it. Petty skill, finding that kill. Could have just spelled exactly how this round is going to go now. Boaster hoping to try and claw it back. They leave themselves once again the free v free. Lazar now playing aggressive on the retake, wants to get this first initial kill. Two players low HP onto the envious side. So there's a potential here for them to take this one. Lambert, he's heard him scope. Boaster 
just pushing in as well. Has the backup of Luzza, but he's hunkered down. He has to try and play around the smoke as Petty Skill sticks his way in towards the back line. Can spot out Luzza, even though he's found the kill. The trade is easy. It's on to Jacob and Boaster now. This dynamic duo have to be swift into the round. They get to the backside. Boaster will take down Petty Skill. And Jacob finds a frag as well. They are able to do it. It's always boiling down to these incredibly close clutches, but that is round number 11, secured just by the nick of their teeth. So, Diffuse will come in. It's fairly close. Obviously, once again, two players staying alive for the CT side as they eventually close out the retake. Tease. They found the kill onto Mole, but they didn't have control of backlines. They didn't have yeah. map control, real estate towards backlines. They had to hold off the rotations. They allowed Boaster, Luz, and whatnot to flood in through the site and get those kills and make it 11 to 11. Still, though, Envious, after winning so many rounds of the trot, they won the round, bringing forward the SMGs. Their money is in such a good position. They can still buy up after losing two on the trot. It's going to be the 4AK buy. Strong utility as well onto all five players with the orb onto Lambert. And again, the double lot set of run now coming from the CT side. So far, hasn't really been paying dividends for them. Let's see if this round can change it. A lot of utility used early here from XL towards Ivy as well. Really don't want to give any information up. Just trying to keep Envious at bay. Plant that seeded out in their minds of what's going on. So, as soon as Jacob shoots, Mole should wide face and get the trade kill. That's the idea behind this default. Molotov comes through. Will deny potentially the trade coming from Mole if Petiskel finds the kill. Nevertheless, this could be the one-man advantage right now for Excel on the CT side. 11 to 11, round number 23. This could be the round that breaks the bank. This is where Excel could finally get back in the lead and take the advantage. Yeah, they're looking good so far. They do have two fairly weak players, but as long as they don't lose any more numbers, keep themselves alive. If they find these entry kills towards the players that are going to go for that first contact towards B, then it's shaping up to be a very effective round. So, four versus five still, 50 seconds left on the clock. The bomb's still towards T-spawn. Two players coming down, Pop Dog. It's looking like the eventual A split. Let's see if they can find a kill, turn this into a four versus four, and use the equalized numbers to their advantage. Jax is aware of Connor's location, but he misses out. Going to go for that little bit of a pre-fire. Does tag him down, but he can just hunker back now. He doesn't have to go for the push. He knows where he's coming from. They can just isolate it. Luzza finds another kill as well. Jacob starts to reign supreme with the AWP. This is what they needed to do all these rounds before Jackson VKL. They peek out, but they're just left on their lonesome. They try and take the fight, but they're overwhelmed. It's all on VKL now, and he's so low in a 1v3. Jacob runs out blindsided, though, by what's going on. Luckily enough, Mole was there to trade. Three in a row now for Excel. And that could cause the eco coming out from this academy. They've lost three in a row, so they will get two thousand. Oh, well, no, two thousand nine hundred dollars round loss bonus. So if they eco this one, they can buy up into the next round. But then again, you do give away eleven to thirteen scoreline advantage. Your money is going to be so low. It gets to the point where if you lose a round, it's almost as if Excel get another one for free because they're going to win versus the force buy or the buy, sorry, and then they're going to play versus the quasi buy. But and luckily for Excel, it's going to be another five AK buy coming from Envious. Their money was in such a strong position. They can still buy after losing three on the trot. Let's give it a 5 AK buy. Excel, though, after losing so many players each and every round, Jacob deducted down to the UMP. No op for him. We saw success from the double op set right now on the CT side. Let's see how they change things up and adapt to the lack of the double op. You can see the way they're switching it up already as well. Jacob now playing the close angle with just the support from Mole rather than Mole actually being that front line defense. He has the Molotov to play with early, also the HE. He can try and keep that T push at bay and he's going to hit everything that goes down. Jacob has the Molotov as well. Can Molly towards ramp once the smoke comes down lower. Mole only has an HE and flashbang, not really the best nades to hold off the push. Nevertheless, though, Jack, here it comes. So they're going to go for the full commit here. They need to be on point. This relies quite heavily on Jacob, but he's blind. But for some reason, they don't fight it. They don't really clear the angle. They just run straight past. He's allowed to get one, but it wasn't enough. He still needed more. So Mole has to do twice as much work now. But Luzza bounds over. He's still pumped up, and he will find the kill. But Hachi plays around the smoke, slips his way in towards Connector. He's going to be such an annoying player into the late round. He can just hunker down now, wait, and try and backstab. He can rotate through Pop Dog back towards Ramp as well, if it need be, and cause a constant cause for control concern towards Connector. They're going to be so paranoid about the push coming through. Lambert actually takes the fight towards him as well. He's feeling powerful with his rifle skills as Lambert picks up an easy 3k. He just absolutely minces the mole. Oh, has no idea if EKL's location will get behind him. But there comes the frag and Envious looking like they've started to work out how they want to take this one. Crucial round one there for Envious Academy. I believe that was the round where if they lost it, they're going to be forced onto the quasi buy. The Tech 9 half buy, and that's where Excel could have made it 13 to 11, 14 to 11, and played around the idea of getting to match point. It's going to be 12 to 12, and Eco coming up from Excel. They lost too many players too many times on too many rounds. It's going to be the 4 AK buy, and the AWP onto Lambert. So no SMGs to farm up, farm up as much cash as possible, but nevertheless, right? It's about the rounds. They're only four away from closing this one out. 
It's the things where you wonder when they get into this position, when they're trying to close out a game, they're trying to work their way through these late rounds. Without Ross being here today, their main coach has aided them so much he in these positions. Well. Yeah. Oh, wow. I you wonder actually, how much that's yeah. actually affecting them mentally. I actually didn't realize they lost both Wendanski and their coach today. So, Paramount players, especially for the T side, but still they showed uh, good prowess on the terrorist side. They got nine rounds. But still, it's six for MVS after picking up the pistol. And so far, only three for Excel, which they won all in a row. MVS now have the momentum on their side. Have Excel let this one slip. Slow contact as they take control of the B bomb site. Luzza trying to do something, but he just isn't really going to be able to hit the mark. Connor, he's just going to sneak out of there. Scavenge that AK. AK yeah. So that's not too bad for him, actually. He will give himself something to play with into the following round. But it's so close, and it's such a shame that Excel just can't get that little bit of oomph behind him. So an issue here as well, you can see the money on your screens. They've lost one round, so they're going to get 1.4k, which is this round here. 1.9k is going to go into the bank after this round has expired, and it goes to round number 26, right? 1.9k, the only people that can buy are Luzza. Actually, no, he has got 1,850, so Luzza can't buy. Jacob can't buy. Sorry, Jacob can buy. It's only going to be one M4 potentially and four UMPs. This is looking like a double saver from Excel. That's my maths are wrong. So if this is the double eco, they're going to allow Envious to potentially get to 14, 14, 12. You let the momentum slip as well. This could be the end here. And again, another very weak CT side coming up from Excel. You can see this is the issue of being a momentum-based player. Look at the yeah. face on Boaster. High highs and low lows means when things go south, what happens to your comms, right? Things will fall flat. Things are lifeless. There isn't the same flare. People firing all cylinders. The star players for Excel have gone quiet, and it shows in the scoreline itself. Yeah, and one of the people that used to try and hype them back up as well and get people was talking Ross and was Ross and Wendanski. And they're not here. They don't have that extra lifeline. They've fallen off, and there's no one there to catch them. So it's going to be the quality of coming from Excel, nevertheless. Jake and there, the kit. Smoke, Flashbang, and 5.7 AK. Kevlar onto Connor, and then the Deagle Kevlar onto Luzza. That's interesting as well. The Orpa buying Kevlar pistol. Can we see the money, please, real quick? Uh, so, Luzza has 3,050, so he can buy an Orpa into the next gun round, but he will lack smokes, flashbangs, etc. But he still can have the AWP into play. Go for the jump boost over here to try and get Luzza to try and focus towards Angie's location. Wasn't actually peeking it, so the smoke will go in. Deep Molly as well. Tries to fight through the fire and flames a little bit here, but just gets sent off to the Burns Ward. But that's what? $1,350 worth of investment just pissed away, essentially. Mm. So, five versus four, obviously Kevlar onto Connor with the AK, but it's in a five versus three now. Unlikely so now, this should be 14 to 12, and potentially the end for Excel. Very true. This is going to be that 14th round secured off the back of this one, unless Connor can just go ridiculous, start to run rampant with that AK-47. The A site is going to be the location of attack. Envious just sprint their way through. And it's clean as well. No one's there to try and defend it. They can just lock it down instantly. Yep. The best right now Excel can do is play for the exit kills, try and salvage some weapons and have their money in a better scenario in case things go really south and it gets to match point, etc. Kind of finds a kill, but no real reward apart from $300. Ooh. Lambert does actually miss a shot towards Jacob here, so he is being annoying, even if he will go down. That's the thing. As long as Connor at this point saves the AK, that's all that really matters. Everyone else can afford to go down, obviously. Mole just going to try and hang with if he finds a kill, fantastic. If he doesn't, it's still not that big of a deal. We'll actually find the frag back on towards Petsco and the double as well. That's definitely something to work with coming out from Mole, trying to flex his muscles a little bit. Mole has two hours coming into this event in the past two weeks. Yeah. And he's still crisp as ever. It really shows to the tried and tested veteran he really is. Jack's on your screen as well in the far back. Mole in the foreground there. What's the potential? Well, Previous star of the UK scene played on the old Easy Skins lineup that had the upset versus uh, Renegades at GMAC London 2015, and since then the UK has really gone quiet. Yeah, mate, no more Dust 2 wins for EZ Skins. There you go. No more Dust 2. Where's the UK going to go? Cash. Cash, yeah. Well, we've seen how that one went today as well. Didn't go too well for the UK. Definitely not. Obviously, with XL right now as well, this has been a major struggle with them. CT halves have always been where they cannot find their A game, cannot start to lock down rounds. And it's a CT half on train as well. We've had so many benchmarks of them just having this exact same feat over and over again. If it's Mirage, it's train. Yep. And simply put, you cannot have such weak CT sides. The only real strong CT side I've seen is versus another UK team on, uh, what was it? Inferno versus Endpoint mm -hmm. a few weeks back when they made it 1-1. And the very strong CT side they had versus uh, Method on Nuke. But still, two maps out of 11 played so far. 
having such an inconsistent C CT side means it puts so much pressure on your terrorist side to get to 10 rounds, try to find 11-4 scorelines, win that T-pistol. Just imagine right now, if Excella picked up one of those two pistols, this could have been 15-12 to 12 in their favor. Yeah, normally as well, they are a team that is very effective on their pistol rounds. Yep. They have a lot of good pistol players. They're quite smart. They can use their sort of normal ability to find those Usually pistols. the narrative is we're casting Excel and we say, Excel have won both the pistols, but they're still losing. This yep. time, they've lost both. They still have a very close game on their hands. Could be the double offset once again, but more picked up this time, goes for the peak, could catch Pediscale off guard. Yeah, this is a nice setup this time around. He actually has a little bit of support with Jacob playing close as well, and they have the Molly. If they go off a contact play, Mole gets the opening frag, but there's no other confidence. That is beautifully played. You just back off and you slow it down. Luzzer as well, goes for the opening kill, back on towards VKL, and a miss comes out from Lambert. Well, this is three and up in favor of Excel. Finally, they have the advantage on their CT side. Can they close this one out? They cannot let this round, round number 27, slip. It's going to be the Orbital to Lambert still in play on the double AK onto Jackson Hadji versus the full stack five man of Excel. Going towards Pop Dog and eventually probably going to be executed towards the A site. Obviously, with the two man disadvantage, someone has to go huge on the envious side. Yeah. They're delaying so much as well, though, because the utility that Excel had into this round, constant oh. Molotovs going down. Envious can't go for these aggressive peaks. Exactly that. Lazo was, uh, Lazo was rotating back towards the A site. He heard the shot come out from Lambert and he's staying towards B. Hadji now trying to get the entry towards default. Hadji pushing up towards bomb train. will find one, but it's not the person he wanted to take down. But Luzza falling could really be quite annoying. Boaster will trade it back up with him. They've got two men left on the side of Envious. The Battle of Attrition is heavily stacked in the favor of XL. They just need to hold their crossfires, batten down the hatches, and try and stay alive. Oh, Lambert 16 HP. Still a four versus two, though, as Jax is towards default. Could catch Boast off guard. Eventually, we'll go down to Molesworth. Lambert now last alive. 16 HP should go down from one bullet from Connors M4. Actually, AK make it as he does retrieve that one. Can pick up the op as well if they want to go for the double up setup again. So, big, structured teamwork plays coming up from Molt and Jake towards the bomb site. They found the initial frag, make it five versus four. And then, of course, Luzzer there towards team main. He makes it the two man advantage for Excel on the CT side, and they close out the round with a man advantage. This is the thing, we were seeing that more consistently for Envious when they wanted to go for those deep information plays. They would do it together, do it as a duo, you can trade efficiently, you can flash for each other. Whereas for Excel, it's just been one and done angles in play by Jacob and Mole. So Lambert, such a pivotal player right now for the Envious side, has no ADP. It's going to be the fast play with the five AKs. Can they finally do it and get match point? This has always been the forward in the side for XL. They've been able to consistently run through them. XL cannot bend efficiently. They just break every time their defense gets hit, and Boaster finds the opener. But there will be a trade back as Haji chimes in with a frag back towards him. Four versus four now as the bomb is, well, just gets planted. Jack's onto low HP. That's as eventually fall as well. Hadji finds that frag. It's going to be the three versus four in favor of Envious. They need to shut Hadji down. He's getting too much power behind him. He's starting to get hyped up and really put his foot on the gas pedal. VKL peek out, trying to bait Jacob to push towards his teammate there in Jack's. But it doesn't even matter. It's just easy kills coming through. VKL finds an absolute ridiculous amount of headshots, and they will close it out. Match point foul now for Envious. They need one more to close this one out. It's going to be the reset as well into the CT economy. Excel back against the ropes. What are they going to be able to fork out here in their inventory and arsenal? How much money have they got left in their bank? Is it going to be another AWP onto Laza? So, double up right now onto Connor and Mole. Is that going to be dropped over? Is that based off spawn? Maybe just a spawn based thing, peeking towards Ali or peeking towards B. It's going to be the season onto Laza. One of your star players to duck down just the pistol. And then the FAMAS onto Jacob and Boaster. Against them, it's going to be the 4 AK buy. And fan, finally, Lambert has the AWP into play. Can he wreak havoc once again and get that final match point, and make it 16? They are going to be playing quite aggressive angles with these orbs as well. You can see them up on top of train right now, just looking over towards mid main. If they can find the opening kill, it could be effective. But Jackson Co. just holding it back, possibly expecting their cash to be even lower than it is right now. Maybe expecting them to go for a bit of a push into this round. But Mole misses the opening shot. At least he works out what the play could be from Envious. Gives away the fact he has the open play as well. Envious Academy could have been anticipating a weaker buy than actually Excel have. It's a very one-sided affair as well. Two players with AWPs, Famases and CZs onto Laza. So, they know an orbs in play, they're going to counter the orb with the execute. Strong call here from Lambert. And this could be the final nail in the coffin here for Excel as we go into potentially the last play. Luzza could actually be the fawn in their side, though. Gets up close and personal as he starts to do a little bit of damage with the CZ. Switches up to the AK, tried to back off, but Petty Skell was able to catch him before he could get to a good angle. Mole, if he found the frag, might have given them a lifeline they need, Snods, but it didn't work. Two versus three, no kits as well for the CT side as it goes for the retake. Two Famuses versus an Orp and double AK as the bomb. Has it gone down just yet? Jacob has to make a move here, hard and fast. Jacob will actually be able to overpower Petty Skill. They fall back into a two versus two, but they can still plant the bomb when they want to. Right now, just keeping themselves a bait. A Dude. big tag goes out. VKL almost deaf at this point. It is just left on him and Lambert. Jacob not coming from the flank. He should have been landing that kill. 
Lambert now with the op towards Green Train. They know exactly where the remaining two CTs are. They can go back lines, peek towards Difa, find the kill onto Jacob, or even go back towards that B-bomb site. Ten seconds left. He found the kill, but does he have time to plant? He is going to be able to get to the site just in the nick of time. Actually starts planting before four seconds, so Boaster can push him. Is Boaster just going to go for the risky play here? Try and peek and take the fight immediately. Lambert nearly lands the fix, switched out to his sidearm. He must know that Boaster is low, only 12 HP on him. It just takes one bullet. This is such an awkward, tense fight as the push comes through. But Lambert does not fancy a bit of overtime. Will pick it up. That's Envious claim in map one. Train is going to be their home turf. Heartbreaking scenario there for Excel. So close to getting that upset win of the first win in the Elite Series versus Envious Academy. Unfortunately for them, though, they do fall short. They lose both pistols and lose that first map on train, 16 to 13. But it goes to show how good that calling was from Lambert throughout the whole map, yeah. right? Suddenly, you know an orbs in play from Mole. You go straight to that set execute. You counter the AWP. You get the bomb down, and you exploit the weaknesses there on the XL side. See, this is the shame as well, because once XL actually started to find their confidence is when they started to go in for those duo plays together, peek together, try find opening frags, trade efficiently, but the confidence just wasn't there. Their CT halves, they seemed timid. As soon as they lost pistol, they started to play timid. Exactly that. So, still though, very strong showing from Excel, but is it strong enough? I believe they're on two points right now. They needed a two win. They need wins on the board ASAP if they're on chance of making top four. That could be the final nail of the coffin to them finishing below playoffs. Yeah, I think that's the thing. They need to try and 2-0 every series to try to close it out, but it wasn't meant to be. Unfortunate for JKM. Why don't we see how his cousin's awesome. feeling over on the desk? Oh, mate, why are you bringing that up again? Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you, Snods. Uh, congratulations to Team Envious, our first Elite Series semi-finalist. Uh, it was mighty close as Excel pushed them all the way. But having picked Train, the boys from Envious rode to victory. Analysis when we come back.
they only needed one point to make it to the semi-finals, and that is exactly what they got. Excel, they did put up a pretty good fight, but once again, Team Envious got the job done. It finished 16-13 on map train. Next up, map two, we will have Inferno chosen by Excel. Um, so, Henry, Thorne, a lot to talk about in that match. It was, it was yeah. a lot closer. Uh, Mole uh, coming into the team for Excel did a good job, but um, how did you see that map? I, I, I've had a lot of hype about this MVS team, right? I'm yet to really be impressed by them. I, didn't, I think that's quite a hollow victory. One, winning both pistols, getting 4-0 up on either half yeah. as well, and just about scraping through down some clutches towards the end there as well. Um, this team is obviously an academy side, but still, some of the fundamentals for me were looking a little bit off. Sure, they're playing against essentially a mix here. Like we said, bringing in one player like Mole, it's going to be quite a difficult procedure on training. You have to play very loose, and it's difficult to play against us sometimes. It'll just be an objective at the very start of the round, going into each one and seeing what you can do. And they did that great, to be fair, to Excel. They actually chose the bomb side to start, no real defaults coming in, just getting the executions in straight away, staying as a five-man unit, trading frags effectively. And we saw some big clutches from Connor. Josh, Mole looked actually pretty decent throughout that, and that's impressive considering he's got about 10 hours under his belt in the last two of course, weeks. yeah, yeah. He didn't look too rusty there. How did you see that, Matt Thorne? I mean, with it being Envious's pick, train especially, yeah. you obviously you knew you are going to have to have a big performance from Excel, and they did live up to the mnemonic of their name, Excel. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is, this has been a, a, a kind of a pattern with Excel, which is that they've had some good T-sides. The CT side always lets them down, though. And if you actually looked at this one here, it was worse than it looked, actually. They had a bunch of clutches that they won just to kind of stay alive, stay afloat in the game. So after the way that T-half was going, they really could have won this game. They looked like they were in the driving seat most of the way, and then their CT side just let them down. They played very default. They didn't do a whole lot, you know, they just had to play at fairly standard positions, I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Envious winning those pistol rounds that you said, Henry, yeah. and then getting the wins off the back of that. But then they allowed Excel back in, and I suppose that's the, the, the default of them. They, they, they're not a a finished or polished side. Definitely not. No, like we said, this is a team has probably never been to a big tournament before. They've never kind of experienced the pressure. And obviously it's difficult to gauge where they're going to be going after this. Like going up against teams like XL, sure, some talented players in there, but like we said, Josh coming in as the fifth replacement one day before this, the tournament started. You have to feel like, okay, Envious, you want to be doing better than this. So 60-30 in your map pick, I'd be expecting better than Envious. I'd be thinking Envious, like we, we could have lost that game. That wasn't actually good enough. What, what, what were you seeing tactically from Envious? Was, was there some good player forcing the you know eco rounds or on X? The thing is, like I, on train, like my favorite thing to see is like see dynamic play. I want to see more aggressive stuff. I think that's what makes a truly great train CT side. If you can push towards IB, push towards inside, trying to get the picks and flashbangs together. I didn't see too much of that in this. Game. We saw a bit of it towards inside with the orb, double, double, double orb setup. Both sides fell back to that. Um, obviously, on train, that's quite a default stance to be on. But it seemed like that was the one, especially for XL, that got them into this game. The double orb setup coming out and actually managing to post some rounds on the board and things were pretty bleak. That was quite nice to see. But yeah, I think in terms of strategic analysis, there wasn't that much to write home about. It was quite default stuff from either side. I have to say, though, I think when the guys from XL were on that CT side, you could see that even though they were still in the game, they were winning some clutches. They never actually had any of the confidence they had in the T side. You know, when they won every big T round, Bosta was like really give, like hyping it up a bit. Oh, it was very noisy out What's here. What's bizarre is you keep that going when you win a clutch on the other side. You know, tilt the opponent a little bit that like they were so close to victory. You didn't do that though. They kind of were a bit deflated, you know. Yeah. And it, it, they, it was almost an inevitability long before they'd actually lost the 16 rounds. So yeah. you felt as though it was really two different teams on the halves. Listen, um, map two, Inferno. Um, Excel's heads would have dropped a little bit. Hopefully, Boaster can come out with as much noise as he gave the arena uh, at the beginning. He was, he was on his own at times. Not on, no one else was cheering. But can they, yeah. can they win this map? Is the one they chose? As we said, Train wasn't their map pick. I would have thought with a fifth player coming in, they'd have no chance of Train. They've proven me wrong. They actually gave it a very good show, and they could have won that. If they get a pistol and either half, they could have done that one. But uh, Inferno, I I'm sure they can do even better. Maybe they can go for a map victory here. I, I have to say, I don't think MVS are looking unstoppable. From the results we've seen, in previous weeks, I would assume they would have looked lights out like a, a world mm. contending team from what I've seen with two zeros across the board. But well, well, they haven't they haven't dropped a, a exactly. round yet. You know? that's, so that's, that's what I that's what I was thinking. I thought I'd see some really. Interesting but you've been able CS. to find flaws in them. That, yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping that uh, XL can step up here. They they do look like everyone's turning up and like this combo of Boaster and JKM, like two of the like less skilled players, I guess, are actually working very well together. They're finding frags and working in synergy. So I think that's quite exciting prospect. We'll it, see what they say. If they start CT side, maybe we can have a, an interesting game. Is that the key? area for winning Inferno is just that, that maybe that partnership between Boaster and, and Luzza. <laughs> I'm sure you need a little bit more, but uh, <laughs> hopefully it can step up and be contributing factor perhaps. Okay, and uh, what are you expecting from this map, Inferno, Thorin? Yeah, so the big concern for me is that 
even though it was a very close first map, there are no moral victories. You, you either win the map or you don't. So it doesn't matter if you came close. It's a wasted effort, ultimately. And the big concern is you looked at the guys from Envious and actually they were looking a bit off in that first map, particularly, for example, like Jax didn't really do a whole lot. He's kind of been the star player. He had the numbers, as we saw when we saw the graphic before the game. So I feel as though coming into Inferno, you need all of that and more from Excel. Because if anything, I expect people like Jax to actually show up on this map, to do well. I think as far as I know, he plays as the Lurker. And Inferno, obviously, a classic map if you're a Lurker, so you can really kind of feed off the opponents. So I think you're going to need the same thing. You can need big performance by Connor again. You've got to have all the kind of all the good players from XL turn up. It is their map, so hopefully they're comfortable and they're not kind of pressured as much. But I, I don't really know that you can take too much credit from from the close loss. Yeah. You really have to kind of come up with a statement game now yeah. for me. Okay, well, you've heard from the experts and these guys. I'll tell you what, uh, we can throw over now, uh, as I like to refer to them as Ant and Deck, uh, Jackie and Snods of the casting world. They're looking Sound, primed yeah. and ready for this. No, they're very successful guys. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> no, there's no flame there. Anyway, yeah, obviously, map two Inferno. Um, one of the big issues here for Excel is yeah. the fact that Wendanski is away. <laughs> Last week, Wendanski dropping 30 kills. And obviously he won't be present tonight. So who's going to fill his shoes in terms of dropping the numbers? Yeah, it's going to be a struggle. Obviously, Inferno, a more tactical based map as well. It's a lot more strat heavy on how they're actually going to play it out. Reminiscent to train in some sort of aspects, but without Ross, without Windansky, it can be limiting for them. Obviously, they don't have the extra sort of potential there in being able to bounce off of Ross in those pauses. We saw two pauses come out for XL, which are good as well, because obviously you can see them actually actively using the pauses they have to try and work on issues. But with no Ross there, to be sort of the eyes and ears, sort of that third person aspect. Obviously, when you're playing, you tunnel vision in, you don't notice mistakes that you're making, whereas that third person view of the coach can notice that and aid JKM in that role. Yeah, luckily of, as well as the fact that they are bringing in Mole as the sub. We saw previous subs in like Reason, etc. like that. Very inexperienced player. Mole, obviously, so experienced. Such a strong UK player, and he's someone you can feed off in the pauses. He can throw suggestions, bring out new uh, innovative ideas and try and cause a ruckus in terms of what they're going to do on their T-sub potentially to switch things up and catch Envious off guard, which we saw as soon as they did the pause. They went for the fast play towards B and they caught Petaskill off guard and they granted them a round and also an EQ round following that. Yeah, we just need to try and hope that is actually going to come out today. I mean, more so in terms of map control, we always see constant heavy aggression towards Banana for XL. It's more of a staple for them. They do like to take early deep Banana, uh, banana control, it's always big. straight off it's the bat. It's good for map control. And obviously, if we see them playing to their strengths today, it should be quite effective. On your CT side, it's so crucial to have control of Banana, right? If you have control of Banana, we saw Gambit at the Major when they're playing Inferno. They would leave Hobbit alone there. Mm -hmm. Adren could just freely rotate back and forward towards Arch, towards Speedway, hold the push towards Arch, have three players play solid towards that default site on A. So the question for me is Excel again on their CT side. Are we going to see the pushes, the map control, and the rotations be good enough to match that of Envious's? Yeah, obviously envious strategically as well. They have quite a lot of depth in their playbook and how they like to approach things, multiple different strategies. It's obviously been quite easy for them to adapt straight into this as well, more of a domestic scene of the UK players. They don't have to overthink their strategy as much. They can play more of a slower style of CS if they want to and not try and actively be the difference maker. Yeah, one of the issues as well for Excel is the fact that envious when they played infused on Inferno, they were so strong on the T side. They played the very slow map control default that just seems to tear apart all of these CT defenses that we're seeing from the UK teams. It's almost as if they can't play the slow game, someone gets a bit too aggressive, agitated, they peak, they give away the advantage. And another issue as well, as soon as you give them the one man advantage, the map control and edge at that, Envious Academy, they never let it slip. They always seem to carry forward the lead and take it home and seal the deal with the round. Yeah, just got to hope for the best there for XL really in terms of the mentality of how they're going to approach it. Obviously, in terms of how they actually play it as well individually, they need to just try and have nice confidence behind that. Yeah, exactly that. Confidence is key. Obviously, speaking to Jake after, Jake Kem, sorry, after the game, he said that their goal was to get 10 rounds on train as it was Envy's pick, and they got 13. So they're happy with that one. They're not actually as down as I thought they would be. They obviously weren't expecting the 2-0 after how their season's gone versus how Envy's Academy's season has gone. Yeah, just really a matter of uh, wait and see now how they will actually approach that. Inferno, of course, a map where uh, usually you are favored on your CT side, but then again, it seems like in current meta, current form of all these teams, especially the Elite Series, it seems to be more T-sided. Anyway, let's see what happens, though, shortly. Yep, we're going to be going to a quick break before we come back in with the action. It should be an explosive one. Do stick around and don't miss it.
everyone. There has just been a short break, but that's all sorted out now. We're ready to get underway with the action. If you are just joining us, it is, of course, going to be Envious and Excel. The first map did go in favor of Envious, but it was a very, very close one. Moving on to map two, Inferno, it's going to be a very interesting game. Should be, Jack. Obviously, two weeks in a row now where Envious Academy have won games being 16 to 13. So yeah. very close affair both weeks. But both times, in the clutch time, the clutch rounds, they bring it forward and they do close out the games eventually. A weakness we've seen from many UK teams, the fact that they have leads, they have advantages, they get to 14, for example, or 15 rounds match point, but they just cannot close out the games for the life of them. Yeah, it's a major issue for them. They just can't shut down rounds. Even when they're that close to being able to lock it down, get themselves to at least match points, give themselves a buffer to play with, for some reason they can't do it. And this always harps back to when they get into their CT half of the second half as well. They can build up a buffer early T half, but CT half does just not go in their favor. So we're going to be going to the pistol round. On train, Envious Academy won both pistols and still only clinching it out. Clinching it out, 16 to 13. So, Pentagon now, the kit double flashbang. What's he going to be doing those flashes? Probably flashing towards top banana. And I believe he is. Lambert peaks towards mid, but spots nothing. The early aggression comes out from Hadja here, but the grenade will force him to fall back. They are just going to try and play these crossfires, but VKL peeks out. VKL just oh! by easy kills. The quad kill comes out. Hadja will have the fifth. Uh. And that's going to set the tone as well for Envious. A stomping ground there towards banana. Surmounts that first round. 1 to 0 with a score on as they demolish Excel on that pistol. The counter strap. I mentioned before it happened, Jack, does Pedaskull have a reasoning for buying these flashbangs? Typically, you see the defuse kit player buy a smoke grenade. The reason being is it's so hard to land the body shots with the Glocks through the smoke. Obviously, an AK spamming through is very different to a uh, Glock spamming through the smoke and front of the kills. So whenever you see someone buying double flashbang smoke on the pistol, they have a reasoning behind it. So, Lazo now with the Tech 9 buys Kevlar as well. We're going to be seeing a 5 set of Kevlar bar into the T side from Excel. No AWP on that T side going into the first buy round. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of an awkward one from this. Going to have to try and grind it out at this point. Boaster with the heavy aggression towards Apps as well. It does make his presence known as he just fires out a couple of pot shots. Excel, they're going to try and play for in, play for spit and picks and work their way into this round. Once again for Envious as well. It's going to be the four SMG buy for them after round number one. Bomb was not planted for Excel this time, which means they are going to be forcing up into this round. Envious make this one nice and clean. Four or five players staying alive. Going to round number three, they're going to be playing versus the unarmored E-code opponents. It's another round there where you can build up your bank as much as possible. We saw the scenario what happens when you win these pistols, you win the first bar and you win it with the SMGs as well. We saw Envious buy four rounds on the trot after losing round after round after round. So much economic pressure they did to excel. That's true. Boaster right now. A lot of confidence behind him. He's trying to go for the early contact players. He wants to try and creep up quad. We'll back off, try and reposition. They don't have utility to try and flash over here to go for a fast attack. So they're just going to have to try and go in dry and hope to trade. Flashbang will go over. Let's keep the players at bay. For the meantime, Lambert with the second flash just falls back towards site, though. They have got through Speedway, and they're going for the split push towards B. Here it comes now, the split towards B through CT Spawn and Banana. It's all down to this first kill towards the B bomb site. If they find the opener, then it definitely could go in their favor, but it starts to go a bit wrong. Connor will luckily enough find the headshot on towards Jack, so it all is in the hands of VKO. He had a great pistol round, but now he's doing damage when he has a rifle as well. They funnel towards him. He picks up three, but it's just left on Jacob and Boaster at this point. Had Jay reigns supreme as he rips through him with the SMG. Lambert will have one as well, so they do get an extra bit of cash, but that was a close round. Was indeed. Damage was done on that scenario. The bomb was down, 12 seconds left. VKL finds two massive kills towards that site. Holds the push and does another bomb to go down. That's going to be the full econo coming out from Excel. Obviously, two players staying alive for the CT side, so it could force into this one that the money is low on that CT bank, but that is a big risk to take, especially with how the last map went, right? You were constantly 4 5 0 down at the start in a rut, and you had to fight back in every single case. It's going to be the Folly coming out from Excel. No pistols upgraded. It's going to be the five Glock by, no Kevlar. And of course, Boaster there with just a decoy. Lambert as well, this time around, playing very up close personal here, has the support of his teammate. If he wants to try and just rip his way through them, build up a lot of cash with this MP9 like Haji's doing, and it could be a bit of a bloodbath. Just try and make the most out of these SMGs into the last round they might want to wield them into. Talking of SMGs, obviously, both of these SMGs finally the kills. Make it a third as well. That's $1,800 into the bank of Team Envious. Another one as well. So four SMGs into this round. The question for me, Jack, is will they be bringing it forward into the first bar? And if they do, if they succeed with that once again, then money will be in such a stellar position. There's going to be so much economic pressure put on to excel round after round after round. We saw what happened on the CT side and train. Yes, you're winning the rounds, but you're winning the one. Two players staying alive, and all it took was one round to be won from Envious 
on their T side and they broke that CT bank and got to match point. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me as well. I mean, Hadje individually as a player will always consistently bring that MP9 or MAC-10 in to the following round, respectively, of what side he's playing on. It's just something he always likes to go for. Team going to try and run the risk here as well. If they find these kills, actually do pick up this round, it's going to be abysmal for the economy. Lambert right now goes towards Banana at the start and rotating back towards Arch. Going to be five players from the T side playing towards second, mid and mid. And look at the play coming up from BKL. Playing aggressive, they have control of Banana. They can rotate the second player away from B. This could be a one-four split. I mentioned in the preface how important it is to have CT side dominance of Banana. No one on the XL side right now. One minute 20 left on the clock, showing any presence. No grenades, no spamming through the smoke, nothing. No presence shown. Could spell the end tiers. We see the over-rotation from the CT side towards A. Trying to set themselves up. They do have the utility to play with, so we could see that flashbang coming over from Molt. Flash in towards quad, allow the push to come out. They will try and blind them, but it doesn't really work out. Hadje as well, double kill with the MP9. He's getting so much money off a weapon that should not be working out this late into the game. Still damage coming through. Lambert as well. They just walk into a choke point, they get funneled in, and they have no idea how to deal with what has just occurred. Four kills found by MP9s in a buy round. How often do you really say that, Jack? It's going to be the one versus three now, or one versus two, sorry, as he finds a nice crisp headshot onto Lambert. 40 seconds left, has the bomb. No utility though, but full HP. He's versus the M4, the VKL, and the SMG of It's going to be a one for one in terms of CT defense. Luzza, he needs to find this kill towards Pit. He has the sight. And that scenario, if he gets a good after plan as well, that could spell the end tip for the first, first buy round. Yeah, if he takes this one versus one against Petty skill here, clears Pit effectively. He could get himself into a really good position. The only thing is, time is ticking away, so he might want to try and skimp out on clearing it. Just take control of the A bomb site as he will push through. Actually, does get on undetected at this point and go for a deep bomb plant at the back site. He knows exactly where Petterskill is as well. Plants the bomb. Goes for the peak, spots him towards uh, sorry Pit as well. Knows where one player is, goes for the face, wins the duel. And now the one versus one, 86 HP for him. Fast flashback comes in. He knows exactly where VKL is. VKL's last bit of utility used as he tries to take the push through. He gets tagged as well by Luzza. Luzza just trying to play around it, finds the headshot. Big clutch coming out from Luzza there. A hat trick of kills. Envious. Sure, they got the cash, but they're not going to be able to close out the round. Luzza steps up in the first buy run, makes it three to one. He stops the trend we saw on train where Envious kept winning these rounds where they'd win the pistol, win versus the eco, the force buy as well, and then win that first buy round. Excel though, they don't go quietly into the night as Luzza wins the big clutch. It's gonna be the AWP back onto Lambert, the four M4 buy this time, no SMGs for the CT side. And actually it's gonna be SMGs onto the terrorist side, Connor there with the Galil, UMP onto Boaster and a Tech 9 for Moles. So is this round one, the one versus three from Luzza, a blessing, or sorry, a curse in disguise because if they lose this one, they're broke Jack. And that could be an even bigger lead here for Envious. Yeah, that reset potential is going to be really, really scaring them right now. They're going to try and change their play style and take it as it comes. Once again, slow style of CS here. They have the utility to play with, though, so they can try and let it go a little bit later. Lambert with a cheeky angle here as well. Just a pixel angle lands the tag. That is filthy. It is indeed. Both now to low HP. Mole as well, the Tech 9. Luckily, Frick sell the players with the full HP. Are the players wielding the rifles? So. One minute, five seconds left on the clock. No presence towards B yet from Envious, but they still have a good read on what Excel want to do towards the latter portions of this round. Bomb towards second mid. Four players, three players towards apps, one towards mid. It's looking like another split. Or potential A players to smoke off Arch. Going to go towards quad. They can smoke off pit, molly pit, and try and get an assault towards his A site. They have the numbers here if they want to try and go for the aggressive push. They are starting to back off though. Recover the bomb as well. This could be a massive fake if they buy into it. Look at the rotate that's come over. You have four players stacked towards that A bomb site, but they kind of realize that something could be afoot. Lambert quickly pushes back through Speedway. He is close for rotate. No Molotov though for VKL. 25 seconds left of the clock. If he chucked out that Molotov, that could really find the entry they need. Jacob though makes it five versus four. Jacob does damage as well. Two kills towards the A bomb site. He can actually lap back round now. Support from Speedway. They decide to just regroup towards A. They know where the players are stuck. Can he stop the bomb plant though? 10 seconds left. If he stops the planter, that could be the end boast of running out with the bomb in hand. He's all down to better skill and Jacob will find the kill. The bomb will be planted and it's going to be 3-2 here as Lambert and VKL are forced to save. Incredibly risky. All he had to do was find one frag. Mole actually burns Jacob to death as well. So Jacob will go down. And it's just left on Lambert and VKL. Connor on the hunt, going a little bit John Rambo right now as he pushes up, trying to find these kills. If he dispatches Lambert, it could be massive, but obviously holding an aggressive angle, never really going to miss that shot. So, Envious right now saving the AWP and M4. No utility, no kit save though. Nevertheless, they will still have the firepower going into round number six. It's going to be three to two. Strong buy rounds once again from Excel on the terrorist side. They need to have a bigger buffer this time. 
On train, nine rounds simply wasn't enough. Can they get 10? Can they get 11 for scoreline if they keep breaking the CT bank and getting round after round? That's actually such a massive round from JKM as well. Steps up massively, start to lead by example. I think we saw him sir, towards the bottom of the scoreboard as well. He is the IGO, you don't expect him to be that frag powerhouse. I didn't realize he died to yeah, Molly as well. Yeah, Molly Molly, obviously. On train, I think we saw him towards sort of 11 kills at the end of the game. Yep. Moving on now, already five frags on the board. But five very very important yeah, kills as Big well. impact frags. So it's going to be the Eco coming out from Team Envious. There should be a 3 to 3 skull in here unless something crazy happens with the saved AWP and M4. Where is Lambert going to be taking this one? It's going to be the three players towards Banana. And then VKL with the M4 as well towards the B bomb side. So heavy play towards the B side, both the save rifles. If the bomb, well, if they execute towards a Envious could save the AWP and M4 into round number seven. So the rotation will come in. They're going to be leaving Lambert alone towards the B bomb site and playing this one nice and slow. Already apps control right now from the T side. As we see, Mole and Bosa there taking control of that real estate. It's only one minute, 20th of the clock. Bomb towards second mid, and slow default and slow play from both teams. Pacing it back a little bit. This slower style of CS coming out from XL, though, has been working fairly nicely for them on their T half. Obviously, just take it as it comes. Envious, they don't actually seem used to that. Used to the more aggressive style of play on Inferno here. Yeah. So, Lambert alone towards that B bomb site. No utility for him. He can't throw the counter flashes, the counter Molotov once he knows the push comes through. Holding. The angle, one versus five towards B, stacked towards A. VKL can save the M4, unless Lambert goes huge. Are they going to go for the run boost over? Actually, no, Jake, I'm getting the elevated angle. We're going to do the smoke. They do peak early, fires off the shot. They now know Lambert's location. Double faces, but he misses. Should have landed that shot. Trying to hold through the smoke as well. Goes for pot shots, Nods, but they've got control of B now. They do indeed. They can get good after plants as well. Lambert towards Ruin, trying to get the wall bang. Almost connects it through the smoke. Unfortunately, he has to shoot through Coffin as well, so it would have just been a wall bang. Nevertheless, it's going to be the Eco coming out from Envious, so can't let's be expecting too much here. Oh, how awkward as well. The timing with the smoke fading, they get absolutely obliterated as Boaster and Connor start to dispatch everyone in front of him. It's just easy pickings. Jack's up close and personal, P250. It was a good angle, but it's not going to come through as Lazar and Jake can take down the remaining members. Five players staying alive as well for Excel on their T side. Crucial for their money, leading in for the rest of the first half. It's going to be four, it's actually going to be three to three now. Let's see what the bars can be like from Envious. They lost the AWP from Lambert in that round, risking the solo AWP play towards B. And didn't amount in that round win. It's going to be such a weak buy. Wow. Two UMPs onto Jackson VKL. The mag similar to Hadji. The double M4 set up there from Lambert and, P and Petterskel. Round number seven. A weak buy coming from Envious. Backs against the Ripers. They're full force into this one. Excel win versus this weak buy here, Jack. They could really be getting a good lead here. Hadji, though, when he has actually done the Mark 7 in the past on Inferno, he's been a very aggressive player. We see him sort of playing that J J uh, JWS style. He's going to take your apartments. aggressive plays towards apartment. And normally, he is actually able to be such a big nuisance into the round. Early contact comes down, though. Envious to try and go for the power play, but Mole is having none of it. Five versus four now. As Mole finds the first. As VK gets aggressive with that SMG. Still, Jax, no HP, tagged down by the Molotov and HE. Will eventually fall back. It's going to be a split defense right now from the CT side. Two towards A, two towards B. Still 1 at 14 left on the clock, and the T side have control of Banana, so they can throw a fake towards B, run back towards the A site, or they can simply execute smoke of coil, smoke of CT, Molotov towards default, not default, sorry, Molotov towards back boxes, and second of first oranges, flush out the site, and have it for free. Excel at this point, a minute left on the clock, essentially, as they are going to try and make their play. Pushing up towards top Banana as they will try and take a late round B play. They know one player has already been weaned off the site as he went for the early contact. So, Jacob lurking once again, trying to find the first frag onto Lambert. It's already one man advantage from off on the first towards Banana. And right now, this is all a ruse, a fake, as he slowly shifts towards Arch, loses the duel, but nevertheless, it's still gonna be the four versus one now. What can Jax do? They've been lampooned, but will they fall for it? It doesn't matter, actually, as Connor pushes his way in, finds the opening kill, but there's the spray back through. Lambert just ripping off a hailstorm of shots through the smoke. Will take down Connor, but he gets caught with his pants down. Knocked down to 40 HP as he wanted to try and take deep garden control. Mole lets it slip, though. CT's now have control of room. They can go for the retake here. Kits onto Lambert. So crucial there that he survived the one the duel versus Mole. Currently got the 3k into this round. Can he make it the ace? They're still going to be rotating back in through CT into Luzzor. Oh, the timing once again. Luzzor lets it slip. But luckily enough, him and Boaster do start to show up. It's left on Haji. This man can be an artist with the AK as he starts to slay. But he will go down. Luzzor will punish him. One player staying alive there. Luzzor clutching it out on the one versus one. But nevertheless, players surviving. They win the round. They make it 4-3. to three. And finally, after losing the pistol, they take four rounds of the trot. 
Lambert there shaking his head in frustration. He knows exactly how crucial that round was. They fully forced into that one. The money will be so low. They're going to be forced to eco here, Jack. It's going to be three to five potentially. And another round now where Excel can build up their bank as much as possible. Already 8,000 to Luzza. But we might start be see we might be seeing 6,000, 7,000 being the average across the board for these Excel members. Heavy utility usage towards top banana as well. I mean, they want to try and take that aggressive deep banana control, push their way up already, get locked in towards top car, try and deny any early map control being taken by Envious. Jax now, still just holding the angle to see if Connor will face. But still, doesn't spot the bomb just yet. Excel not giving away their hand, as it's still 1 minute 25 on the clock. Usually, versus the anti ecos, we're seeing very slow passive plays. They want Envious Academy to walk into the crosshairs, walk into the crossfires, and have the man advantage. He's got everyone very low, though. If he gets flashbanged over to try and peek in, could surely shut them down, but he won't be able to. Does tag another member, Mole, Boaster, and Connor. They have all taken quite an impactful hit. Yep, Silver Lining could be the low HP. Pedascope finds a frag onto Jake Kim. Low HP onto Boaster and Mole. One shot from the Deagle will take them down. That could be the cause for concern for Excel. VKL holding the offhand as well. He should get the body shot. The only one with real utility is going to be Luzzer. He needs to try and force them out, but VKL just hunkered down. Dirty Deegan starting to come through as he connects these shots. Takes down Boaster as well. He's just ripping his way through. He's a sentry oh gun. God. As he finds that final kill back on the wards, Mole. It's all in the hands of Luzzer now. Sure, he finds the AWP shot, but he's trapped between a rock and a hard place, sprinting straight towards it. He's going to have to try and overpower Petty Skill. It wasn't meant to be. Envious off the back of VKL, just reigning supreme with the Deagle. Three players were still low, though, but VKL showing off his prowess with the Deagle. That's three nice peak headshots with the Desert Eagle. It's going to be four to four now. A big eco round one there for Envious Academy. Only Kevlar bought for Hadji as well, so that's a non-Kevlar eco win. Very rare sight to see. Anyway, it's going to be round number nine, four to four to score on a weak buy once again from Excel. Lacking, well, I guess it's two players lacking utility. They got once again to Lazar Jacob. They're lacking firepower though onto the SMG. Three AKs will finish off the rest of the buy. It's going to be the once again to Lambi. Lambert even. So. 140 left on the clock right now. Banana control, really not given to one side. Lambert once again playing passive towards Arch, holding. Oh no, actually speaking towards second mid, so. Aggression here from Lambert. We saw him hit the shot earlier before onto Boaster. Got the tag, but didn't quite get the frag. It's still a four versus, sorry, five versus five. Four versus four is the scoreline as we go into one minute 20 on the clock. Could have been a huge kill there as well towards Jake early as Lambert just went for the pot shot back through the smoke, but no one is going to be going down that easy just yet. Bomber still towards T-Spawn. VKL, after having such a strong, dominant previous round with the Desert Eagle, you can see. Envious right now, they trust him to play solo towards B and have the extra man towards the A site. Jax towards CT spawn fast rotation towards A. The Bomber's still in T-Spawn, 50 seconds left on the clock right now, which means Connor will have to retrieve that and bring it back towards A. But they might be giving away the hand. They actually are going towards this A site eventually. Get themselves into the counter boost play. You get Luzzer up top, but he misses the shot. That is absolutely critical to the round. If he would have found it, that's when it would have started to go in their favor. Jacob, though, comes into effect, will punish Lamb, but that's the all power of Commission Snods. They can try and overwhelm the site defense now. One man advantage right now for the T side. Make it four versus four. Hatching out towards single box. Gets the first frag, goes for the second, he lands it. And now suddenly it's a one man advantage for Envious. Haji, one man army, he's just ripping his way forever. Switched out to the side arm as well. Haji keeps it going. Haji, a 4K. It doesn't matter where he is, he will just consistently shut anyone down that comes towards his bomb site. Crucial round to be one as well. If they had lost that, they would have been reset once again, a force back onto an eco quasi bite or a weak bite that. It's going to be five to four now, as Envious once again take claim of the lead. So, obviously, only one round separates these two teams, Jack, but obviously, as this is the eco round, only Kevlar bought for Jacob, as he has also got the light utility, the smoke and flashbang and tech nine. It's looking like a six to four scoreline after winning the pistol already. Strong CT side from Lambert and Co. Team Envious. Spice up a little bit there as well. Going to go for the run boost. He would have got an early opener if it would have worked out. But XL, they're just going to go for the fast burst nods as they group up. The run boost comes out themselves as well to get into the elevated angle. Make uh, Mo's, boot, Mo's life a little bit easier even. Because they are going to go for this fast burst towards quad. So, once again, VKL solo towards the B bomb site. They're risking the stack towards A. They know XL don't want a piece of what VKL brought them in round number eight. Hold on the angle, playing quite aggressively versus the pistols. Takes a shot through the smoke, but eventually will fall back. I'm going to try and take that deep arch control. Luzza with a drive-by. Finds the headshot on towards Jax Lambert. Will take them down, but has to try and retreat. Hunk down to a good position. He was in a one-and-done angle. He can't consistently hold from there. You can see VKL. He knows exactly what the T's can be doing. Wrapping around through arch. He's holding the off angle towards Ruin. This is a very smart play. Gives a banana. He's going to allow the T's to walk into his crosshair. It's the four versus four. The CT's don't have control of arch. 
I think he's got so much information. He can relay that to his teammates and tell them exactly what they're doing. But the teams are just holding for the push from Envious. They're trying to run the risk into the round. But Hadje, he gets a little bit riled up, a little bit confident as he pushes out, takes down Boaster. But there's the response. Mole was behind him. Three versus three now. Two players remaining onto the A side from the CT side. What can Petterskill and Lambert do? As long as they shut down Lambert, they're in a very good position to try and close out the round. But Petterskill, he's being a big nuisance. He's finding the kills. Hattrick comes out for Petterskill. One, two, three. It's as easy as that. Still. Fairly strong Aker coming out from Excel to take down two rifles out of the CT bank. Two players now going to be needed, needed to be dropped. Read by Kevlar and Armor, and then read by Utility as well as we go into round number 11. It's going to be 7 2 4, Jack. And things are starting to run away right now for the MVS Sir after winning the pistol. Single upset at this time on to Lambert, and the 5 AK buy come out, coming out from Excel on their T side. What are they going to do with this now? No up onto Lazar. This might mean heavy execution, a fast play, a contact play as well. Stack together, have close spacing, play the trade game with the rifles, and slowly play contact play, walk into one of the sites without the AWP. XL, always heavy aggression early towards app control. They've been quite restricted in the past few rounds of how deep they want to push into banana. Not trying to go for that active early play. And this could be coming back to buy them as well, because they're getting in towards that A bomb site, but the Rotex there so early, because Envious can try and take that map control once again. Though. So much faith in that anchor VKL. Once again, the four-man stack towards the A site. Connor holding for the push towards Banana, but you can see VKL, he won't take the bait. He's playing so passive, so far back. Even if they come towards B, he can play retake. They can trust in that. VKL has to find one frag, get some counter nades in, buy time for the rest of rotation to come in through CT. That's his job right now as the anchor towards B. Jax looking to join him as well through CT spawn. You can notice as well how he goes right side instead of speedway. The reason is he can run that way and the T's won't hit you through Banana. So just little things that make a big difference. It's very true indeed right now as they're just being able to play to their own strengths. That three man set up towards the air bomb site though as the push is starting to come in. It is going to be the fake just trying to lampoon them. Make them believe that this is going to be the true play. They need to make a lot of noise right now with the support of Jake. And they have no real utility to invest into this though. They just need to find the frags and force that over rotate. Playing on the smoke could aid them. They push straight through the flashback. They find the open, but actually they don't. Boaster is able to trade it effectively though, but Lamp uh, comes straight back in. This is where things start to get awkward. They can go for the fast rotate straight over and VKL is doing damage towards the reserves. Four versus two now. 10 seconds left. The bomb can't be planted. It's going to be the save coming out from Excel. They throw in the towel. And they're gonna come back biting into the next round, round number 12. How many rounds is that in a row now? Can we see the scoreboard, please, Observer? So that is five rounds in a row. They're gonna have 3.4K into the bank account, so they can drop over two AKs if need be. So we are gonna be seeing another buy potentially coming out from Excel. Actually, no, they can't drop over. You don't get round loss bonus when the bomb is not planted. So the two players saving did not get the 3.4K into the bank. I forgot about that. But I believe they can still buy up into round number 12. Let's see what they're gonna bring out. It's gonna be eight to four. Envious, oh no, seven to four, sorry. Envious. Nearly doubling the score out of Excel as they do go for the quasi buy around the two AKs. Come back 10 out to Jacob, Kevlar on all five players, two tech nines as well as opposed to and Lazar. What can they do versus the strong CT defense we've seen so far from Envious? Seems like B aggression is going to be the order of the day as they try and make their play through. Flashbang starts to go over early to try and keep them at bay. Molotov's down nicely as well. Heavy tags are coming off, and Excel, they don't have the best arsenal to play with here. Relies quite heavily on close range. We need to see Connor and Mole actually get the opening kills to give them a little bit of leeway. Low HP into all five players. This should be a bloodbath towards the B site as eventually they will get churned up through CT spawn. Dripping straight through and through the smokes right now. Mole will retaliate as he finds one kill. And Jacob's there to try and support him as well. He is on the bomb site. If he takes down Jax, maybe there's potential. But his teammates drop around him. And VKL, it's always him towards B. No matter if he's the only man there, he's got the confidence. He knows how to play it effectively. We're seeing constant rotates over. He's playing mind games with him, not in the same angle twice in a row. And he's just being able to decimate XL. Question now for XL. Do you buy up into this one? Or do you concede to go for the quasi buy and allow Envious to get to that big round number nine on their CT side Inferno? We mentioned in the preface before both maps as well, Jack, was how many T rounds can Excel get? Is it a big enough buffer? We still have nine rounds, nine terrorist rounds on train as well of all maps. And it wasn't enough once things flip down onto the CT side. If they get to five or six, I don't think it's going to cut it here, Jack, especially if they lose their second pistol. That's what's scary as well, because obviously when you look at Inferno, you think, right, if you've got a good CT side, that's where you're going to be able to get a majority of rounds for Excel. Their CT side in Inferno is incredibly weak as well. Orping on the CT side of Inferno, it's such a strong map to talk about orping. It's Hadji as well, backed up by the orp of Lambert. As he finds one kill, will eventually be traded out. Actually, gets a second as well. Lambert misses the shot there, but it's still a four versus three. One minute, 17 on the clock, and the bomb towards Apps. 
already starting to decimate any idea that XL wanted to try and use into this round. They can't go for an effective play. They have to try and reevaluate the situation and work out what they want to do. Off their locations right now as well, they do have a little bit of utility spread between them. Obviously, you've got the two smokes, you've got three flashes. You can try and take control of the A-bomb site. You can block off Lambert's line of sight, but this is still going to be so awkward. Silvalani now for Excel is the fact this is a four versus three and they're on the terrorist side. You can see a split defense coming out from MVS. Two towards A, two towards B. So it will be a two versus three towards this site. But Lambert finds the first. He will be able to take down Connor. And he really is your absolute showstopper in the majority of rounds. This could be quite awkward. Jacob, the main man himself, the in-game leader, the brains behind the team. Trying to lead by example right now, but he just cannot connect the shots. As he has to try and resituate, peek straight into a round, rips him down. That's Pet, he's got to find the frag. And that CT half from Envious looking scarier by the second. Already on nine rounds as well. This could be an 11-4 here. Excel can be buying up into this round. If they lose this one, they will get 3.4k into their bank account. But if they don't plant the bomb, they're going to be having another weak buy, a UMP buy, two tech nines here or there, and strong utility nevertheless, though. Anyway, they're round number 14. Nine to four will be the scoreline. It's going to be the AWP onto Luzza, Tech 9 onto Boaster, and then the three AKs to finish off the rest of the T buy. Versus then will be the AWP onto Lambert and the four rifle set of run out from the CT side, playing two, three set up this time. No longer four players towards the A site from Envious, but Lambert playing aggressive once again towards middle holding for that second mid peak. Luzza with the AWP now as well. I want to see him back on form, try and go for those more aggressive openers, try and just be that extra little bit of lifeline that Excel needs. That's where he's at his best, normally when he just has the confidence, no leash on him allowed to do what he wants. Lambert peaks. Shows his presence towards mid, misses the shot though, but it's still a five versus five. One minute 15 on the clock, the bomb towards second mid. Connor again playing so passive towards Banana. He's never going aggressive, trying to get information, trying to get first frag. He just holds for the push, but gives away so much ground. Talking about that, Lazar finds the first and it opens up Arch right now for the terrorist side. Yeah, it was a tight angle there for Lambert and he did land the tag, but obviously couldn't try and convert that into the kill. Gets shut down, they only have four members left right now. They're spread fairly thin, 2-2 two, two to a site. And the push does start to come around. If they go for this pin to play towards the B bomb site, as long as Jake finds that opening kill snods, this could be a massive round. Lambert is down as well. It's a big scalpel to take. The primary opera and in-game leader of MVS is down. Let's see now, 40 seconds left, and here comes the split towards B. They're going to try and go for it. VKL is aware that Jake is slowly tiptoeing in from the rear. Jack's trying to get into a good position as well, but it doesn't matter. This time around, Connor is too fast to handle. Finds the flick shot, takes him down, and VKL, furious that he's lost control of his bomb site, wants to try and deny this. Four versus three now, as the flank comes in towards Banana. Mole gets taken down, it's a three versus three, but Luzza's the angle with the AWP. Oh, Luzza will find a headshot back on towards Haji, that's a power player taken oh! down, and the flick as well. Luzza back for more, no crumble served up today. Big 180 flick found there by Luzza, should secure the round five to nine here. And so on to VKL, so has no smoke though, but has the defuse kit, so could potentially still get the exit here. Look at the first frag onto Connor. There's still time, but just for a few more seconds. Yeah, pushing in. He needs to try and go for it right now if he wants to at this point. Pushes in, just suicides out. And at least XL find themselves a bit more of a lifeline, a little bit of a buffer. That comes down to a massive shot there from Lazar. How often can you really expect that from a player? Obviously, the first frag, fairly standard. I thought, okay, he's going to be caught off guard here. Does the 180 split yeah. onto Petterskill, catch him off guard there. And grants Excel round number five, but the problem is, again, is five enough rounds as a buffer leading into the CT side, especially if they lose that pistol. Lambert peeking towards mid, trying to see if we can find the first kill. It's going to be a very uh, different default here, Jack, as we're seeing three players go towards Banana at the start from Excel. Usually it's just Connor, but this time Jacob is joining him. They have strong utility on that T side. And double up setup right now coming up from Jackson Lambert on Envious Academy. Could that catch Connor off guard? You see as well this time around, VKR actually opts in to just play that support role towards the A bomb site and just leave heavy aggression on Jax. Make him push his way down, try and gain the early banana control. This could be quite risky. If the early push comes through, if they take down Jax, it's going to be a late rotate. It is indeed. Mole once again towards apartments. And again, actually no, not again. Jax going to be the solo anchor this time. As the AWP, we saw what happened last time when Lambert was alone towards B. He missed those first two crucial shots and gave up that B bomb site for free. Can Jax do it better? Lazar, he's been looking good with the opening. He will land the tag, but it's not quite the frag they needed to try and give them the opener. Excel, though. They know exactly where Jax is playing from, but they don't really take advantage of that weak defense for a split second. Vikel has joined the ranks towards B. It's a 3-2 to two CT defense. Fairly standard right now coming up from Team Envious, but there's 35 seconds left on the clock right now. Three towards B, the bomb. Farsi stomping back up Banana, going to be rejoining the ranks towards this top Banana position. All down to Mortis, other effect towards A. 
Well, that has to be the difference maker. It's one of the keys to them being able to pick up this round. Just going to try and lurk it out, though. Wait for the rotate to come through and cut off that rotate as the push comes in. They want to overwhelm everyone that's there. Connor finds a headshot, but if they don't clear second oranges, VKL can strike. He finds one kill, nearly the spray down, but Jacob is too fast. We'll take it. Needs to grab the bomb and get the plant right now, though, as time is starting to tick away. If they deny the bomb plant, the round will be over. Three versus two. Three versus three, sorry. I to know exactly what Hadji is. They have two diffuse kits, so the CTs can still win this. Loves up, stepped up massively in the previous one. Can he do it again, especially as they're a man down now? Oh, he was in the bat line. He was setting himself up to really be such a key player into the round, but unfortunately, he will be executed. Laza realizing they're going to try and go for the double push right now. They want to take that deep on control. We'll be able to find the frag back on towards Lambert. He can just slip out of there as well. Stays alive. Jacob does a bit of damage. Laza just needs to try and bait for them, but the bomb is in an awkward location. Hadji hoping to force the face. He does come off it. He comes out. Laza shuts him down. Another round being picked up off the back of Luzza's individual skill. Smart stuff there. Hadji wanted to bait him out, but that coming off just came back to bite him. Close but no cigar there for Envious. They have the man advantage on the retake by Luzza and Boaster rain through. They win the two versus three. It grants them nine to six, but it puts so much pressure on them right now to win their CT pistol. Something strange as well. On that T side, you, if you're Luzza, the flash comes in, you peek out, you spot Jax towards CT. My first reaction to that scenario is, okay, this, the orbs towards CT, I can hold this angle, one of my teammates can smoke off Ruin, and then suddenly the AWP has no impact into the round. You smoke CT, smoke off coils, the AWP can't rotate back, have an impact in any scenario, and suddenly it would be a four versus one towards that B bomb site. Instead, Excel, they play more scared, more timid. They don't really take advantage when they see it in front of them. Keep it the fact they are playing with a man, well, I say a man to disadvantage, they're bringing in Molo as a sub, a star, and a key player in the UK scene, brought back this week, and only with 10 hours played in the past two weeks, still delivers and performs strong. Here's the thing as well right now, in a lot of these sort of camera segments where we're actually seeing the team, Jake's not talking that much. This is the quietest it seems we've actually seen from Jake. Obviously, on the first map on train, Jake looked like he was being very vocal. Now coming to the second map, it's more Mole that we're seeing actually pipe up quite a lot. Obviously, Mole, he's done a lot of uh, in-game leading in his time, been yep. at the helm of quite a few mixed teams. He's won so many lands, countless tournaments. UK Masters, has he won Premiership before? Uh, With yeah. Robin and that lot? Yeah. yeah. Premiership, UK Masters. Insomnia lands, of course, back with the Infused lineup. So, and easy skins, of course, I-56, or I-55, one of the two. Anyway, it's going to be the second half right now. Is six rounds a big enough buffer for Excel on their CT side? We keep seeing weak counter-terrorist sides from the UK teams. Can we see them step up when they most need it? If they make this a 1-1 draw, get to three points in the league, it puts less pressure on them, having to win versus all the other remaining teams in the tournament. It's going to be the kit and smoke defuse from Mole, and a force out Kevlar for the CT side for Envious, though. It's only going to be smoke flashbang onto Lambert. It's early push coming through right now. Lambert just trying to bait out the shots, get an idea of what the setup is going to be early for XL. What's interesting as well is the fact that Lambert bought a double flashbang. He flashes the top of Banana and it's keeping three players here because of that one flashbang. So now we can flash the players out of apartments and smoke off Mini as well. This is such a strong pistol right now coming out from Envious. Jacob and Luzza need to work as a good doer here as well. Trade for each other effectively as they do start to find the first frags, but Jake goes down and Luzza will follow shortly as well. Kit though for Mole and a smoke kit. Smoke kit, sorry? Smoke grenade and the defuse kit for Mole. It's going to be two sets of Kevlar for the CTs as they go into the retake. Bomb is planted, four versus three, but retaking this A site is so difficult, especially the crossfires the T's have right now. Yeah, the tags are coming through as well. Boaster, luckily enough, will be able to connect a headshot as they want to try and take this site together. They have one smoke to play with. Mole will find another snapshot, and it's him and Connor. Connor, obviously very good in these sort of situations. Mole can be incredible with pistols as well, but not when he gets sidelined like that. Lambert peeks out, says hello to Connor, and we'll take him down. Envious winning four out of four pistols in this best of two here. Such a smart pistol as well. Never seen that one before. You buy forces of Kevlar, four people towards apartments. You buy double flashbang smoke grenade. You flash top banana at the start, you keep all of those CT players there towards top banana. Obviously, typically you stack three players on your CT side on the pistol towards B. You keep them there, you can smoke off mini pit from middle, and then you can also flash out apartments from middle as well. You do the jump flash, and that goes deep enough to flash players in pit and towards default. So, great pistol, surmounts four out of four pistols for Envious, and that could be finally on the coffin for, Envy for Excel even. So, it's going to be the Folika coming out for Excel. Just four sets of unkevlar CT players with just pistols as the bare minimum. Pushing their way straight in towards that B-bomb site. They're just going to try and overwhelm that defense early. They have been able to take control, essentially, for completely free. So, three Tech 9s since this round and two Mac 10s. So, strange buy from Envious. 
Obviously, you win this round, you're not investing into AKs and whatnot. That means your money's going to be stronger and stronger as you go into the buy rounds. On those angles right now to see if there will be any aggressive play from XL. They're just keeping it back. They've invested slightly into the round. Obviously, Jake's got armor. They have a couple of pistols here and there. A little bit of smoke utility. So you don't really want to go down if you don't have to, but the kills definitely start to rain in. Luzza holding a bit of an awkward angle here. Takes down VKL. So Lambert is the only one that's going to get through the round alive for the tease at this point. So, four players dying on that terrorist side. The bomb will eventually explode, but you have Tech Nines. It's not as if this was a three AK by a Galil and a UMP, for example. It was two Mac 10s, three Tech Nines. So actually losing all those players isn't really that bad of a scenario for them as they go into the next round, round of 18. They're actually going to be playing versus the Eco as well from Excel. So once again, SMG's bought up, trying to find frags and stack up as much cash as possible, leading into the first and remainder buy rounds of the second and final half. Envious now. They've got the range to play with on Petty Scale and VKL. They can just hold back, and the aggression can definitely come out from the T's with the SMGs as Lambert will start to prove that. Finds the opening kill. Haji as well somehow burns Connor immediately and gets a double kill off the back of the, uh, the MAC 10 there as he finds that headshot on the wall. It's actually a yeah, blessing in disguise as well. Dying to the Molotov instead of the MAC 10. Mm. You're only giving away $300 in straight cash to the T side instead of 600. So fair enough. You see, some teams actually on the terror side will just jump into Molotovs, die on purpose because. It stops the CT or the T-Bank growing so much off of the back of the submachine guns. Boaster looks a bit lost right now as he is going to be sprinting around trying to find something to make this work. Lands two dinks and nearly takes them both down, but will go down himself. So, we saw in every single scenario, Envious Academy bringing forward the SMGs into the first buy round. Looking likely they're going to do it again. Every single time they've done it, they've won. Actually, no. First bar round, the massive one versus three from Luzza mm -hmm. did stop that from happening. So this could have been an even worse affair right now. This could have been 13 to five, 14 to four scoreline right now. Excel in such a deficit after losing both pistols. Seems like without Ross not having that coach there to maybe keep things calm or maybe give suggestions. I believe they call all their pistols on the fly as well. Not having a coach makes a massive difference. And right now it's showing they are 12 to 6 down. Envious doubling, Excel scoreline. But nevertheless, it's going to be round number 19. Double up set of run out for the CT side onto Luzza and Mole. Three SMGs brought through and double AK set up from the T side. So, likely chance here for Excel to make this 12 to 7. But of course, taking a round on your CT side Inferno versus Envious is a big feat. Think of this quad burst right now as well. Playing with those SMGs, it could be really, really hard for Luz to be effective with the AWP. If he finds a first frag, a quick trade should be coming in, just on how fast they can take the aggression. They do try and take an aggressive hit towards Arch, though. Burst their way straight through. They find the opener back on the Warren Taji, but Petty Scale can trade it out, and here's where that counter push comes in. Take control of the A-bomb sack, pins their way around. Luzza finds a kill from the site, but eventually will fall. Jax executes Boaster as well, and they're just left with two players left standing. Once again, MD is playing the trade game. They have no AWP. They can't go for the execute style CS. Instead, they group together. They trade the kills. Yes, Luzza finds a frag towards Arch, but the MAC-10 is there. Hard and fast. Gets the reply kill. And once you go one for one on your T side and you have control of the sites, playing the after plant is so difficult. Sorry, so easy because you can get the crossfires between default and pit. You can hide towards apartments and peek off of contact off a teammate. Mole will get an extra frag, but that's really all they're going to get into this round as it goes to 13 to 6. And the chance of them winning this one is looking ever so slim. Rana is going to slip away. XL getting ever so close to losing this series 2-0 at this point. This is round number 13, now secured by Envious. Incredibly close to being able to close it out. Mom goes down as well. Oh. Doesn't even get to save the AWP. Yeah, just laughs that one off. Obviously, he's only brought in for this week as Wendanski and is Ross at the same wedding? I know they lived. I know they lived. I think so. Yeah. They're, both, they're both busy at a wedding. Yeah, so. He knows he's here for one week. He's just trying to enjoy the moment. Don't get too stressed about it. Don't get too upset. You're playing versus the hardest team in the tournament. Just enjoy playing on the stage and think about a comeback potentially in season two. Anyway, it's going to be round number 20 right now. 13 to 6 is the scoreline. The Folly could come out from the CT side. It's looking like a 14 to 6 scoreline here, Jack. A very one sided affair so far from Envious. Yeah, that push is going to come in early. They actually do find the opener as well. And take down Connor. There's the response from Mole trying to wield that pistol to a, a powerful stance, but instantly falls back. Jax as well takes down Boaster over towards the A bomb site. It's just Jacob and Luzza left. They do strike, but immediately traded back by Lambert. And Luzza yeah. trapped on his lonesome once again. Could try and retrieve said AK. Actually, there's an M4 there instead. Not really the best gun you want 
Already the Lambert on his heels to try to stop Luzza from saving this one. Oh, lucky dink there from Luzza, as eventually with the aim punch he will land the kill. One minute left on the clock, they know exactly where the last player is from the CT side. They're going to plant the bomb, and on 32 HP, with no Kevlar, a near impossible round for Luzza to win. It's going to be saving this one and throwing the towel and having that M4 into round number 21. Four rounds now picked up for Envious as this bomb will blow up, and we will see Envious getting ever so close to secure a match point. Envious. They're just looking dominant now. T half, they've stepped back into it. No yeah. chance of XL actually trying to find their form. They can't get back into their stride. Their CT half is just riddled with the issues that they always have on their CT half. They must have under, well, underestimated Excel on train. And suddenly they've woken up. They've realized they actually have to play proper Counter-Strike versus Excel if they want a nice and easy win. They blow the slow, steady style. And Excel just give away the advantage time after time. It's going to be 14 to 6 now as we go into potentially the final buy round here on Inferno. Excel, only on two points. The draw would be so impactful for them in the standings of the Elite Series, but doesn't seem too likely here. Yeah. Overall, this is going to mean as well, if Envious do pick this up, they would not have dropped a game so far out of the course of five weeks. Yeah, every 12 maps straight. Right. Yeah. Anyway, then, another buy comes in. Let's see what Excel can do. 14 to 6 down. Let's give the double up setup as their answer to their current demise. Luzza opting towards the A site. Mole, the AWP as well, going to peek towards Banana. See if he can get the entry for his team and make it 4 versus 5 in his favor. VKL. He's going to be the first casualty of the round here. This time around, XL actually getting the opener. Could give them the confidence boost they need to try and take a different approach into the round. The T's have backed off from Banana Control as well, so we can see that early CT rotate to support towards the A bomb site. If Mole wants to try and push down, take deep Banana Control right now, just in the elevated angle, providing support with the orb. Yeah. Really good play from Excel. Luzza finds the first frag towards mid with the AWP. And now Mole has control of Banana, so you're going to be seeing the rotation coming in from Connor, rejoining the ranks towards Arch, playing towards Speedway. He can watch the push up if the T's opt to go through Archway. And that will mean Jacob knows he's got his angles covered. Yeah, this is a nice setup in play, actually, from Excel. This definitely could be the difference maker as the push will start to come through. Early nade usage comes out as it soars through the skies. They're going to go for this late burst towards that A site, getting themselves in these high angles. They want one of the CTs to peek right now. Jax on top of the balcony, trying to find that first frag. Jacob, though, playing such a passive angle, might give away his position if he steps one step too far. If they spy out with Shadow here, they will be able to take him down. Jax now gives the game away, forced to bound off and start to reposition. Mo actually finds another frag as well. There's just three T's remaining into the round, and time is starting to tick away. 30 seconds left. They have to go for the commit towards the A bomb site now. Petty Skill gets the opening frag. There's the trade as well as Jax will connect the headshot back on towards Poster. Lazard Hunker down, but now he's dead as well as Haji swiftly eliminates him. Somehow, some way, we're into a two versus two. 20 seconds left. The bomb is eventually planted. It's going to be kill to Connor, though. That could be the saving grace here. Careful on both players, but the AWP for the retake on the A site is so difficult to utilize. This was a round that XL should not have even got into this situation with. They should have been able to close it out, get themselves seven rounds on the board. A late play as well as they start to come back in. Mole could have been caught with his pants down. Lucky that the time was ever so slightly off, but losing Connor like this spells defeat. He realizes this and will probably just try and go for the save. Five versus three. Push comes in towards the A site, but once again, the trades from Envious Academy Amount round number 15 of the match point here for Envious on the second map. It's going to be 15 to 6 right now. Envious winning a round where they were so unfavored in that scenario. The two-man disadvantage, 30 seconds left on the clock as well. What made it even worse is the fact that Excel knew exactly what was going on. Mole was alone towards B. Had a four-man stack towards the A site, so things couldn't be any better for Excel. They have a two-man advantage, all the players they need on the A site, but somehow, some way. They eventually did a slip. It's going to be a match point here for Envious and probably game here. And it's going to be the UMP onto Luzza. Three M4s and AWP on that CT side by. And the 4AK and AWP by onto Lambert for the T side. Envious. Now they've got this one in the bag at this point. Just going to try and use their standard approach to the rounds. A little bit more aggressive towards Banana though. Heavy nade usage as well. They want to try and take that fast play towards Banana into the late round. Five versus five. One minute 30 left on the clock. Lambert with the AWP peeking towards mid holding if anyone will eventually get a bit too aggressive and walk into a scope. Hadji here boosted towards Banana trying to find the first frag towards B. But still, Mole with the AWP won't peek just yet. Shoots his up, tries to peek someone in. Jacks now towards apartments, tries to get the first entry, he does just that. It's gonna be the four versus five, and now the CTs are split. Oh, nearly found the second shot, but Laza will take him down. Connor just having a bit of a pool party now as well as he waits for that push to come through. Four versus four. One minute left on the clock right now. Bomb towards Banana. CTs are forced to split up their defense, but right now you can see Jacob 
has all the information towards mid, spots no one, should give away the deal. It's going to eventually be the BXQ. The aggression getting ready to come through as they do flood their way through. Mole misses the opening shot though. That could be the downside. VKL as well can their drop back on towards Connor. It's a three versus four at this point. Mole is able to get in towards Garden, but the smoke blocks him off. He can't be as effective as he needs to be into this round. They go for the elevated boost, peek over the top of the smoke. Jacob will fall, and they are just getting absolutely minced at this point. This should be the end here for Excel. Two versus four, no kits as well as the bomb. Does tick away. It's going to be the one versus four now. Mole last alive. What can you really do with the op here? Finds the first, but shouldn't find the others. He's trying to connect these shots, hoping to the best of his ability, but he will fall. A 2-0 is taken. Envious continue in their streak. They haven't dropped a map yet. Two are in every series, five weeks in, and they are still undefeated. Excel had that chance on train, 16 to 13, but eventually couldn't close that one out. And it will be another 0-2 for them into week number four. So, in terms of the standings, I believe that's what? 12 maps won for Envious Academy, 15 points for them. Excel still sitting on two points. You can see the comparison there, 15 to two as Envious Academy still go undefeated. And this is, well, the real point to make out here is the fact that it was four for four pistols there for Envious on both maps. Excel, they have to take a pistol, try and get some rounds in that regard. That could have been a win for them on train. Yeah, it's true. They just couldn't pick up the pistol rounds, couldn't give them any leverage to play with. And it, it just didn't happen. They couldn't find the buffer they needed to actually start to close these rounds out, get themselves into a good standpoint. Confidence just completely left them as well. Yeah. Still, though, good showing from Mole, obviously subbing in on 10 hours in the past two weeks and played a lot better than you would expect from someone on such low playtime. Big plays were from Laza onto Train and Connor as well. But fortunately on Inferno, no one was really stepping up. They had all guns blazing. You heard Bosa screaming round after round on that T-side Train, but nine rounds wasn't a big enough buffer. And actually, they went nine for six on, this, on their T-side, sorry, and they did not get one CT round on Inferno. That just goes to show currently how weak Excel CT sites are. Yep, definitely weak. Unfortunately, able to close it out. But someone that always does Excel over on the desk is going to be, of course, <coughs> Tom Deacon. Let's get back over there. Oh, thank you very much. From the juiced up Jackie and the sublime snods, thank you very much. Uh, map two <laughs> going <laughs> right. to Team MVS. Make it two out of two. They stay unbeaten, but will they ultimately prove unbeatable? Um, the thoughts of our superstar analyst, Henry and Thorin, when we come back.
books. So if you're just joining us, you missed MVS taking on XL. Uh, glorious match, and do you know what? Uh, week five of Counter-Strike. Job one for Team MVS was securing their semi-final place. They did that. Job two, stay unbeaten, which they also did. Wow. Uh, they defeated XL 16-6 sorry, on map two in Inferno. So all Tiger. happening in that round. Uh, joining me on the panel is a man who picks up on every mistake that has ever been made. His name is Henry, um, <laughs> but that mistake is next to you on the left. Um, Thorin, lovely to have you here. Um, what did you make of those two maps? Same story again, really, for XL. Yes, indeed. Again, showed some promise on the T side. Actually, I mean, funnily enough, they lost the pistol on this one, but they were actually doing pretty well. They had a nice little comeback. That let, let that go in the first half in itself. And then you can tell when they go to the CT side, they're not just being beaten and having a bad CT half. They look like mentally they are beaten when they get onto the CT. Like they expect it to be bad and they almost have to overwhelmingly win the T side to have a chance. Yeah, I have to agree. It's not good enough at this point. The fact that they do look quite good, quite flamboyant on the T side, quite fired up. You can still hear them shouting when they're winning rounds and they're, they're ready for it. They, they, they're getting six rounds in that first half. That's decent, right? That's actually a pretty good T half, like all things considered, but not winning a single pistol once again. And then going into that second half, didn't pick up a single round either. Like the CT half is a real problem for them. And it makes sense, right? This is not the strongest team within the, the Elite series you've got, but the fact is they bring Mole in as well. The CT side is always very difficult. That's where you need the synergy. You need to know, trust your teammate exactly what he's doing and have the reads as to where your team is going to be positioned and you just don't have that the time they've had to prepare Mole with 10 hours under his belt and some of the stars as well Connor I've heard so much things about this guy that the fact that he's done one of the, the stars in the UK right now he posted like six frags towards the end there which wasn't really good enough and not going to give them a result against yeah. a man who got four frags just in the pistol round was V kill yeah. we can welcome him down to the panel right now from team MVS Clap. Hey buddy, welcome to V-Kill joining us on the panel. Uh, another job done. Uh, five yes. weeks, uh, five matches in the Elite Series and five wins. Uh, you must <coughs> be pretty buzzing about it. Haven't dropped a map yet in a competition. Yep. Uh, it was a bit tough today, but we did it. Yeah, interesting on train. That was your, your map pick, right? And you seemed like yeah. you were struggling a little bit there. Was it this, the unknown factor against going up against this team or playing a little bit looser? Um, did I catch you off guard, potentially? Like, mm. the, their T side was quite fast paced and the sticking is a five man unit? Yeah, uh, I mean, they, they played well as, a, as T side. Where they, I mean, they used that the fact that sometimes uh, our B fix T scale was yes. a, a bit alone and they. Just use that timing to yeah. to to, br to grab the the city bomb and our retake out was a bit cheeky as well, so yeah and they, they, they played well actually and we we didn't manage to really made our game mm -hmm. you know uh, we 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 worked on our retake but uh, today that didn't work. Okay. Forty kills there on the stats, uh, Mr V Kill. You can see um, ADR of 78.4. Um, fantastic match. I mean, obviously that pistol, I don't even remember the pistol <laughs> round. It was a fantastic, getting four kills. Uh, you and um, uh, it was, it was Haji, I think, came in for that kill. There it is. I mean, this is insane. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't like that in my, because I was half bind and so I just... Uh, <laughs> just shot. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, I wasn't this was, so this clear. Is the, this is my favorite. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I did third kill, but I yes, didn't you know did. how. Yeah, you did. I saw it. Like, you, that's it. Just as you fired the bullet, as the second you died as well, yeah. that's when you got the kill. And that pretty much won the round. That, 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 that got them right back in the game with that one. They were four, yeah. three down. And then once you won that round, that was pretty much, mm. pretty much won every single round after that. Yeah. It seems to be, I mean, on the teams that we're watching in the Elite Series at the moment, you have a huddle before you get started. There's a lot of embracing afterwards. I'm not saying it's just because you're French and you tend to do that, but I'm saying the camaraderie yeah. of your team. Is that why you're winning these matches at the moment? Are we the only one? Well, I think so, to have that team huddle to just It's not a very British thing to do, is huddle. No, it's, like, they're they're more mean. reserved, right? So these guys, you seem like more of a unit. I don't know, yeah, we, we, yeah, I think it's a, maybe it's French thing, but we just think about it like uh, at the beginning of the team when we came to the Gfinity. Like, uh, we, we need something to, to yeah, um, I don't know, motivate yeah. yes. us. Because because Henry was talking about the synergy on the CT side, which you seem you know pretty strong in, in a lot of the rounds. Um, so maybe that synergy comes from you being a, a bonding team. I didn't understand. Sorry. Just the fact that when before the match you huddle together, yeah. there's like a team unified unity in in everything yeah. that you do. I mean, you've got this this huddle here. Does that help you when you're playing the CT side, which requires that synergy? Uh, I mean, it's just 
it's a psychology for the, the, the handle. It's like we are just um, saying that we are together, uh, don't make some hero move or something like that. We are really together, we are a team, so let's play like a team and all be all okay. right. Okay, so speaking of psychology, are you psychologically prepared to win the Elite Series? We are. You yeah. are? Yeah, are you prepared to win the Elite Series? Yeah, yeah, well, of course. But we need to, I mean, have this psychology all, all the game, you know, all the map. Yeah. Have you got any events planned coming up? Like, yeah, we, What are you doing later? <laughs> no, I mean, like, in, ter in terms of, like, obviously, this is the first time I've seen you. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've watched you guys play, and you seem like a pretty yeah, we decent squad, right? Uh, so, we qualified this week yeah. to the CB, you know, the Denmark land, but oh, it's a, a small one, you know. Like, yeah, uh, that's cool, man. Yeah. It's uh, nice to see you guys progress. You know, like I, I'll be honest, I haven't heard of many of your players yeah, yeah, before coming into this one, and, and it seems like you're actually a really skilled unit, and you've got yeah. some big stars in there. So yeah. I'm hoping to see more from you guys. Yeah, well. thank so, you. Yeah, yeah I hope so. And is that how? Because we definitely discussed it. You, you're kind of like a, a, a team, obviously, they're able to. Uh, if you're playing really well, and someone from the envious team, wherever they may be in the world, performing, you're able to swap in and out. Is is that the kind of thing that's going through your uh, head? At the beginning, Envy Academy, that was for this, but. Uh, after like maybe two weeks or something like that, we just talked to each other and we loved each other like really, really um, humanly. Yeah. You know? So we didn't speak about that. We just want to stick together and it, it, it will feel like sad to have someone have to because it will have no choice to, to go there because that's yeah. on. That's what the, the boss that's says. The point. You, have the to, point. you have to go yeah. when they, they call on you. Well, congratulations on the win Thank you. Uh, today. Uh, Ariel Free is with, uh, I think, Luzza from Excel, one of the losing teams. I am Lose. indeed. I'm really sorry, but I really want to be like, Luzza, you are a loser. Uh, I've heard that one plenty of times. <laughs> uh, talk me through it. Map one, let's do that first. Strengths and weaknesses. Ooh. The light's gone. Oh, you were commoning about the light and that's what happened. Uh, so in the dark, explain to me, um, whilst you can get some light. Oh, we've got the photographer, I love this. All hands on deck. Um, <laughs> what was the um, highs and lows of map one? Uh, well, we lost both pistols and both first buy runs on train. So we were pretty much at a disadvantage from the start. I think we won the first buy run when we were 4-0 down. We just rushed down B, got the kill, and then did the same th the thing the next round, I'm pretty sure, or something like that. So I think we ended up going up like 6-4 or something like that, which was obviously pretty good. And I think we ended the half at like 9-6. Yeah. So that was good for T-Side Train, especially with having not our normal five and yeah. just playing a bit more of a puggy style. Do you think that made a difference to you having more to do? Uh, I think it, it might have made a small difference, but I think that we didn't do much preparation for Envious as obviously it feels away on holiday and going to a wedding. So we thought we would just prepare for the weeks ahead and just try and take this one as it went. How dare he have a life? It's still not allowed. Uh, right, what's the tactics now? Because you guys are not very high on the table. You've got to really try and make a mark on that. How are we going to do that? Uh, we're just going to focus on the weeks ahead, try and get two zeros. I think if we get two zeros against both the other teams and fixtures go our way, then we can still get top four. Who have you got next week? Uh, either Reason or Infused. Okay. I don't know which order. Who do you see as a bigger threat? Probably infused, Atlan. Okay. So. Okay. Ooh, controversial, apparently. Uh, well, thanks, Lazar. You might be a loser, but you'll be a winner, hopefully, sometime soon. Bye to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Ariel, and thank you to Lazar. Yeah, the, the next match is going to be Reason. Um, how far can this envious team go then? In this, in this particular tournament, wow, at this stage, I'm not dropping that probably all the way, I would say, Tom. Yeah. Uh, that's probably quite a promising. Answer. Indeed. Yeah. yeah, I think they could probably win the whole tournament. I mean, I do think they can be challenged by the likes of an Epsilon. If they I get to a full series, you know, they've had, they've had a few times where it was mainly the lesser teams I noticed they really crushed. I thought it was pretty impressive that Manchester 16 0 the Prophecy team. That's obviously a team we also thought could contend. So I think they are the clear favourite as, as it currently stands. But then again, I think the fact that they're inexperienced is why you wonder what will happen when they get to a playoff kind of performance where some of the players on a team like Epsilon, they have like some experience, you know, they played in big tournaments. Yeah. So that's where you, there's more questions to be answered, I think. Perfect. Well, listen, gentlemen, thank you very much. And match two. Oh, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, we will start talking about match three which is method and reason. They look to kickstart their tournament with a big performance.
Welcome back. Our third live match features two teams, bottom of the franchise standings going into this weekend and also bottom of the CSGO standings. I'm obviously talking about Method and Reason. Henry, Thorne, um, you have been a bit disappointed where Method are in the table. Yeah, two very different storylines coming to this one. In the Method team, we've got lots of experienced kind of established players who've been CS generally. They've been around for the last 10 years. Big names in there. And then Reason Gaming, you're looking at them. They've got lots of up-and-comers, like lots of names I've heard of, but not necessarily watched before. I've heard there's a lot of talent available here. But yeah, definitely, Method for me, they, they need to start performing in this. This, is, this should be their environment. If there was a time to step up and show us what they're made of and how experienced they can be, they need to start seeing results right now. Um, Thorin, uh, a man who's come back uh, is Thomas. He had two weeks off in a holiday in Cuba for, why not, yeah. middle of the Elite Series. Um, Cuba, of course. Cuba, of course. <laughs> you know, a controversial little place. Um, so the thing is, uh, Thomas is back. Uh, yeah. what, what can, he, can he lift reason? To, to, to get that win. Well, that's also another factor of where they are in the standings being so disappointing is that since they're a team who have LAN experience, they've been practicing together, you don't really want one of the players just going away, having a few weeks off, you know, in a tournament like this where you want unity, you want to kind of build up a routine. So hopefully him returning to the, the squad can boost them a little bit. And I think actually, it might sound a bit cynical, but the fact that these two teams are the two teams that very rarely win, but now they're playing each other, hopefully you know, this can at least be a chance to get a win over a Reason Gaming team that haven't looked that good. So this should be a win where Method should be able to kind of pick it up and then build into something else. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that for Thomas's sake, he brought in some souvenirs for the rest of his team. Some um, cigars, maybe? <laughs> a couple of cigars, yeah. hopefully. Not allowed to smoke them in here. Um, listen, I'm going to throw it to Ariel right now, who is with Thomas himself. I am indeed. I was just having a bit of a goosey gander because I've also been to Cuba and we were just uh, bonding over our stories from Havana. Turns out Hemingway's number one dude there, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Can you feel inspired by Hemingway? Definitely, <laughs> yeah. Basically, Thomas is really, really nervous about speaking to me on camera, but I don't see why not. I want to ask you, did you get a good tan whilst you were there? Uh, yeah, really good tan, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see that. Uh, two weeks away, how have you been mentally preparing yourself whilst you were on the beach in Varadero? Oh, I've been burning a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm ginger and I've been burning, getting redder by the day. Just loving it. I'm talking about the game, I'm not talking about you. Uh, just watching CS, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you done much training this week? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've been uh, pracking a lot and been anti stratting them. Annie Okay. I love this. He's slowly rolling away his chair from me as much as he can because <laughs> he's so long and so good. Quickly, what's your thoughts on today's match? Uh, we're going to put Jenko to bed. Nice. Yeah. Love that. Anything else? I hope this sleeps a long time. Okay. Yeah. Thomas, it's been an absolute pleasure. Back to you, Tom. <laughs> Has it been a pleasure? I think it was uh, a, a bit of a pleasure. Uh, I love uh, Thomas. He's back. He's very yeah. entertaining to, to follow on Twitter. Um, uh, basically saying there was a bit of bingo going on. He was very excited about it. Then it turns okay. out the bingo numbers were called out in Spanish. Okay. So, um, so listen, uh, he hasn't obviously been practicing too much for the last two weeks. Let's see if his number comes up here. It, exactly. Oh, yeah. And will it be a turn up for the books uh, with another... Bay of Pig Siege. Um, listen, um, hopefully no fat ladies. No, no just 88. don't like them. <laughs> 88. Any bingo um, references you want to throw out? Um, no? Legs house. 11, something like that. Oh, Do that. Nice little Bring that in. wolf whistle. Uh, this method team, uh, when we look at them, uh, Weber has to, he's been turning up. But Neil Zeno, they both got that experience and they need Definitely to show been. that today. Been around for a very long time here. They, they should be, I, I would say, in this tournament alone, they're probably the most established players to have, especially from the British scene. Weber at one point was considered one of the very best yeah. UK players probably we saw towards the end of CS Source and then towards the beginning of CSGO as well. So much potential, just never really lived up to the, uh, the hype, I guess, especially in this game. Always so good in CS Source, but I'm hoping this team can turn around. I think if they somehow can make it to the playoffs, that's when they can step up. But right now, it's, it's difficult to really imagine that. They haven't really done too much so far. Two draws, two losses. I've expected a lot more. And mm. hopefully today, I think they will get the 2-0 against the likes of Reason, but I'm yet to really watch them play. So I'm excited to see what they bring to the table today. I mean, we've got Jenko on their side. Uh, second, uh, when it comes to the top of the killing stats. I mean, uh, Jenko is a, is a weapon and, and, and a younger player compared to Weber and yeah. Eusinho. But it, what can he offer today? Can he, can he be that, that vital cog to get them a win? If, if he He's firing on all cylinders, that should raise the game for the rest of the players. Well, I think especially in a match like this, because I can understand why some of the UK players might get a little bit thrown off their game or intimidated if they're playing against the Freddie B's of the world, yeah. the envious, you know, who have like the bigger name or the backing and 
all the rest of it on the top of the scoreboard. But in theory, it seemed like reason. You know all these guys. You've played with them in mixes. You played with them in official games, all the UK tournaments and qualifiers. So you should be fairly kind of settled for this sort of a match. And if you are someone like Jenko, maybe he has some kind of star potential, this is the match to show it in because there's also kind of that bragging rights, you know. These UK teams, it doesn't matter if they're bottom of the scoreboard, they really don't want to lose to each other. Mm. Now, we, we talked about it earlier, the keys to victory today mm. uh, for both teams. What, what, would, what would be your number one? Uh, Neil Zinio is the in-game leader. He's always been pretty decent in that role, but can be quite hot-headed as well. I think start going against him. I think he needs to kind of hold the team together. Um, it's another team we're not really sure what the future holds generally for this lineup as a five-man unit. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. It hasn't been the best result so far. But yeah, for me, Jenko, Weber, they're the two big names we need to watch out for. In terms of reason gaming as well, I've heard a lot about Cinder and Thomas, especially. We obviously have a spotlight on him. I'm not sure what the story behind that is. He seems to be a character. So I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to see what he brings to the table. I think we could just just because we missed him for two weeks. Right, and now okay. he's back. That, that's, yeah, that's, okay, he also that's, went that's, to Cuba, that's apparently, which is a big topic. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know if you go. picked up on that. No, no, I didn't hear anything about that. I think it was a 13 hour flight, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> not like it lasted <laughs> 13 hours, that interview. But uh, maybe that's just me, you know, time. Well, there you go. Any thoughts on the uh, game? Yeah, I think actually that Cinder having a big game is yeah. one for a reason. Okay. You know, when I watched him play before, he certainly seemed like one of the better players, even in some of the games that they were, they were getting beaten pretty heavily. We had a little feature on him when I was here before where they went and visited him in Ireland and kind of saw a bit of his background. So he, he certainly seems like a prospect. I mean, I hadn't known him before this tournament, but it's been pretty good so far. And for a reason, obviously, it hasn't been a good Elite Series. They've got to have some kind of a change of pace, I think. They can't just keep playing the same way they have the past weeks. OK, well, listen, i tell you what, no more talk about Cuba. We're going to leave that to one side. But what we are going to do is take a little break. When we come back, we will have our match three today, Method versus Reason. Don't go anywhere.